Among swords from around the world, the Japanese katana is famous for its sharp, cutting edge. The Japanese, generally small in stature and not as physically robust, did not rely on the weight of their swords to slash like Western swords, but instead focused on developing the sharpness of the katana for slicing. There are numerous stories and anecdotes about the sharpness of these swords. In this video, we will introduce the top five sharpest katanas in history. Number five, Honobami Toshiro. Honobami Toshiro is a famous Japanese sword designated as an important cultural property. It is known for its fearsome sharpness with an anecdote that casually swinging it could shatter an opponent's bones. Among Japan's historical swordsmiths, the top three are called the Tenga San Saku, and one of them, Toshiro Yoshimitsu, crafted this sword. Originally made as a naginata, it was later reshaped into a katana through grinding. The katana has an overall length of 28 inches, and a blade length of 23.1 inches. On the surface, it features an engraving of a dragon entwining around a kurikara sword, which is the sword held by the standing statue of Fudo Myo, a Buddhist deity. The dragon wrapped around the sword is said to be an incarnation of Fudo Myo himself. This sword, made in the Kamakura period, was a treasured possession of the Ashikaga shogunate, which ruled Japan during the Muromachi period. In 1565, during the Eiroku incident, the 13th shogun, Ashikaga Yoshiteru, known as a master swordsman, was assassinated by the Miyoshi trio. The sword was stolen during this event. Hearing this, Otomo Sorin claimed that the Otomo family was its rightful owner and bought it back for 3,000 gold ryo, equivalent to about 300 million to 900 million yen in today's value. However, later, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, the unifier of Japan, sought the Honobami Toshiro, and it came into his possession. It was then treasured in the Toyotomi family's first ranked treasure box. In 1615, during the siege of Osaka, Osaka Castle was set ablaze, and amidst its fall, the sword was miraculously found unscathed in the castle's moat. After being coveted by various feudal lords, it ultimately became the property of the Toyokuni Shrine. The name of the sword derives from its sharpness. In the Kyoho Meibutsucho, a list of famous swords from the Edo period, the origin of the sword's name is noted as being due to its incredible sharpness. Capable of breaking bones just by pretending to cut towards someone. Honobami means bone eater in Japanese, signifying a sword so sharp that it could consume bones. This sword is thus named for its extraordinary cutting ability. Number 4. Kotetsu Kotetsu is a Japanese katana said to have been owned by Kondo Isami, the leader of the Shinsengumi. This sword was crafted by a swordsmith of the Edo period who shared the same name, Nagasone Kotetsu. Since the specific Kotetsu used by Kondo Isami does not survive, its details are unknown. However, the swordsmith's style is characterized by a slight curvature and a bright steel that forms the body of the sword. Kondo Isami was the leader of the Shinsengumi, a group of elite swordsmen formed to maintain order in Kyoto during the turbulent end of the Edo period. Kondo Isami, renowned for his unmatched skill with a real sword, was a warrior suited for actual combat. He was also known for his love of swords, often discussing them whenever he had the chance. A notable event that brought fame to both him and his sword was the Ikedai incident in Kyoto. This was an attack by the Shinsengumi, a security force of the shogunate, 
on a group of pro-emperor anti-foreigner samurai gathered at an inn. The Shinsengumi, with only four members, including Kondo, stormed the inn where over 20 samurai were plotting against the Tokugawa shogunate. In the fierce battle, two of the Shinsengumi were wounded and withdrew, leaving Kondo and one other to fight until reinforcements arrived. Kondo emerged unscathed from the battle, as did his Kotetsu. After the incident, he wrote in a letter to his father in his hometown that while the swords of the other members were badly damaged, his own life was saved because his sword was a Kotetsu. Today, swords made by Nagasani Kotetsu are permanently exhibited at the Iwakuni Art Museum in Yamaguchi Prefecture. Number 3. Tombokiri. The third position is held by Tombokiri, which, while not a katana, is said to be the spear with the finest cutting edge among all Japanese spears. Among the many spears, the top three renowned as the Tenka Sanmen Sol include this spear. It was crafted by the swordsmith Fujiwara Masazane during the Muromachi period and is famously known to have been used by one of the strongest warriors of the Warring States period, Honda Tarakatsu. Tombokiri is a spear, but it is not limited to the typical image of a thrusting weapon. The blade part is 17.2 inches long, 1.2 inches at its widest, and 0.4 inches thick, resembling the appearance of a sword. The blade shaped like a bamboo leaf, is excellent for thrusting and creates a wide wound upon penetration. This spear, which is nearly 20 feet long, was carried into battle by Honda Tarakatsu, who supported his lord Tokugawa Ieyasu. While it was common for swords and spears to change hands among multiple owners during the Sengoku period, this spear remained a personal favorite and a hallmark weapon of Tarakatsu from the age of 16 until his death. One legendary battle involving Tarakatsu and this spear was the 1584 Battle of Komaki and Nagakute, where Tokugawa Ieyasu confronted Toyotomi Hideyoshi. Initially assigned to guard the rear, Tarakatsu upon learning of his lord's perilous situation against Hideyoshi's massive army, led a small force of just 500 men to the battlefield, armed with his spear Tombunkiri. He boldly confronted the large enemy force across the river, and in a daring display, rode into the river alone to allow his horse to drink. Impressed by Tarakatsu's brave and loyal actions, Hideyoshi reportedly ordered his men not to harm him. The name of the spear comes from a legendary incident. During a battle, as Tarakatsu rested with his spear planted in the ground, a dragonfly flew and landed on its tip, only to be split in two. This incident gave rise to the spear's name, Tombokiri, meaning dragonfly cutter. After Tarakatsu's death, the Tombokiri, along with his iconic helmet, was passed down through his descendants. However, during World War II, it left the family and is now entrusted to the Sano Art Museum in Mishima City. The spear was displayed in January 2015 for the first time in 11 years. Number 2. Heshikiri Hasabe Heshikiri Hasabe is a sword that was possessed by the famous warlord Oda Nobunaga, known as one of the three great unifiers of the Sengoku period. This katana was crafted by Hasabe Kunishige, a swordsmith active during the Nambokucho period. The blade length is 25.5 inches, with a base width of 1.2 inches and a tip width of 0.98 inches. The wide blade width coupled with the thin blade thickness, is a characteristic feature of the swords from this era. One of the highlights of this sword is its notare, a wavy, undulating pattern on the blade, which, along with the blade's edge, has similar tempering patterns. 
this aspect of the blade is among its most distinctive and admired features. There is a famous anecdote about Nobunaga, the owner of the sword, demonstrating its sharpness to the world. During the Sengoku period, a monk who was one of his retainers committed an act of disrespect. Enraged, he pursued the monk, who fled and hid under a shelf. When Nobunaga discovered the hiding place, he drew his sword and pressed it against the shelf where the monk was concealed. Astonishingly, the blade cut through the shelf and the monk's body. At the time, the action of pressing and cutting was known as Heshikiri, and hence the sword came to be known as Heshikiri Hasebe. Normally, Japanese swords require a pulling or pushing action against the target to cut, making this incident not only a testament to the sword's sharpness, but also a reflection of Nobunaga's ruthless character. Regarding the sword's subsequent ownership, it is said that Nobunaga bestowed it upon Kuroda Kambe. Kambe was a genius strategist, known for his wit, political skills, and exceptional negotiation abilities, serving under Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi. This sword, passed down through generations in the Kuroda family, was designated a national treasure in 1953. In 1978, it was donated to Fukuoka City by the wife of the 14th head of the Kuroda family. Since then, it has been carefully preserved at the Fukuoka City Museum. Number 1. Dojikiri Yasutsuna Dojikiri Yasutsuna is the premier blade among the Tenko Goken, the five best swords under heaven, and is designated as a national treasure. The Tenkagoken represents the five most exemplary swords in the history of katana. This sword, one of the earliest in the history of Japanese swords, was crafted during the Heian period by the swordsmith Ohara Yasutsuna, known as the pioneer of swordsmiths. Dojikiri Yasutsuna measures 31.5 inches in blade length, 1.1 inches in base width, and 0.8 inches in tip width characterized by a strong curvature and a broad blade. The blade pattern is a small wavy line known as ko mirare. The name Dojikiri originates from a legend involving the warrior Minamoto no Yorimitsu, who is said to have slain the demon Shuten Doji, one of the most famous demons in Japanese folklore. During the Heian period, Shuten Doji and his demon followers were notorious for abducting people and committing evil acts in Kyoto. Yonimitsu received an imperial order to subdue these demons. He infiltrated the demon's stronghold and hosted a banquet, serving wine laced with poison. As the intoxicated demons became immobilized, Yonimitsu used his sword to finish them off, beheading Shuten Doji with it thereby giving the sword its name, Dojikiri, meaning Shuten Doji Cutter. Before being named Dojikiri, the sword bore the ominous name Chisui, blood-sucking, reminiscent of a cursed blade. During the Edo period, a practice known as Tamishigiri was conducted to test the sharpness of the finest Japanese swords. This involved stacking the bodies of deceased criminals and determining the sword's sharpness by how many bodies it could bisect. The Tamishigiri for this sword was performed by the swordsman Machira Chodayu. When this sword was swung at the stacked bodies, it is said to have cleaved through six bodies and even cut into the wooden base beneath them. These tales attest to the extraordinary sharpness of this sword. Currently, this sword is housed in the Tokyo National Museum, the largest museum in Japan. There, exhibitions featuring Dojikiri Yatsutsuna are frequently held, allowing the public to witness this legendary sword. Japanese swords, known as katana, have a rich history steeped in tradition. These weapons were originally used in battles and duels, 
but they also held symbolic significance as emblems of the authority of the emperor and the samurai class. Owning a famous sword symbolized power, even for feudal warlords. Historical figures like Oda Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who emerged victorious during Japan's Warring States period, generously gifted renowned swords acquired as spoils of war to their loyal vassals. These Meibutsu swords became tokens of gratitude, rewards in place of land, and treasured heirlooms passed down through generations. In this video, we will introduce the top three most expensive Japanese swords in history. Number three, Okanehira, 270 million yen. The Okanehira is a Japanese sword believed to have been crafted in the late Heian period. It was created by the renowned swordsmith Kanehira, who was active during the late Heian era. The old Kanehira is often referred to as a miraculous sword crafted by Kanehira, and it is said that even Kanehira himself could never replicate it or create another one like it. In the early Showa period, attempts were made to replicate the old Kanehira, but it was reported that modern swordsmiths couldn't reproduce a sword of this size with the same strength and lightness. Current swordsmith trying to create a tachi with the same length and width as the old Kanehira ended up with a thicker blade to maintain its strength, resulting in a weight exceeding 4.4 pounds. However, the Okanehira achieved a weight of just 2.97 pounds through innovations such as thinning the blade and adding grooves. While the first names that come to mind when thinking of famous Japanese swords are often the five swords under heaven, Tenka Goken, the Okanehira stands as a miraculous sword that rivals them. This incredible sword, created during the Heian period when technology was far less advanced than today, remains highly treasured in the modern era and is considered a national treasure among national treasures. The Okanehira has a storied history, having been owned by the warlord Ikeda Terumasa during the Azuchi Momoyama period. He was one of the most powerful daimyo in Western Japan, governing a domain of 920,000 koku, a unit of rice, and serving as the first lord of Himeji Castle, which he extensively renovated into the magnificent structure we know today. Terumasa was known for valuing his retainers above all else, often prioritizing their welfare over valuable treasures of gold and silver. However, there is a remarkable exception in the case of the Okanehira. It is said that Ikeda Terumasa regarded this sword as priceless and he was willing to pay a significant sum to acquire it. The Ikeda family continued to treasure the Okanehira as a closely guarded family heirloom, even refusing the request of Emperor Meiji to see the sword, insisting that he must come to their domain in Okayama to view it. There is a story that illustrates the exceptional value of the Okanehira. After World War II, General Douglas MacArthur, the Supreme Commander of the Allied Powers SCAP, personally implored the Ikeda family to relinquish the Okanehira. However, the Ikeda family staunchly refused, stating that they would only consider it if the sword was exchanged for the Statue of Liberty. When the GHQ General Headquarters decided to confiscate Japanese weapons, including swords. A sympathetic provost marshal, Colonel Caldwell, who understood the importance of Japanese swords, cooperated in ensuring the protection of the Okanehira. Ultimately, in 1967, the Japanese Ministry of Education purchased the Okanehira from the Ikeda family for 65 million yen. When adjusted for inflation, this amounts to approximately 270 million yen today. This price tag remained a record high for Japanese swords until very recently, truly reflecting the extraordinary value befitting the finest of Japanese swords. The Okanehira is currently housed in the Tokyo National Museum. Number 2. Yamambagiri Kunihiro, 300 million yen. The Yamambageri Kunihiro is a sword forged during the Azuchi Momoyama period by the renowned mastersmith Horikawa Kunihiro 
upon request from Ashikaga Castle's lord, Nagao Akinaga. Horikawa Kunihiro was immensely famous during his lifetime, with many warlords and daimyos commissioning blades from him. Interestingly, the Yamambageri Kunihiro is a replica of another blade called the Yamambageri Chogi. While it's an usushi, a reproduction of an esteemed blade, it's celebrated as one of Kunihiro's masterpieces, renowned for its captivating allure. Nagao Akinaga, who owned this blade, served the Hojo clan. However, he faced defeat in the Battle of Odawara Conquest, leading to the confiscation of his territories. Subsequently, the sword came into the possession of a retainer of the Hojo clan, Ishihara Jinzaemon. The name Yamambagiri Kunihiro originates from a legend where Jinzaemon slayed a Yamamba, an ancient Japanese mountain witch. According to the tale, while walking in the mountains with his pregnant wife, she suddenly went into labor. By chance, they found a cottage where an old woman lived. Leaving his wife with the old woman, Ishihara hurriedly left to find medicine. When he returned in haste, he found the old woman voraciously eating his newborn child. In a fit of rage, he slayed the witch using his blade, leading to its subsequent name, Yamambagiri, or the Mountain Witch Cutter. In 2017, when the Yamambagiri Kunihiro was displayed at the Ashikaga City Museum for the first time in nearly 20 years, it attracted a staggering 37,800 visitors, turning the event into a grand success. In the latest news from July 2023, the city of Ashikaga in Tochiki Prefecture and the Ashikaga Citizen Cultural Foundation announced their plans to acquire the Yamamba Kunihiro for 300 million yen. Negotiations with the current owner are underway with the intent to finalize the purchase within the year. Of the purchase price, 200 million yen will be sourced from the foundation's assets, while the remaining 100 million yen will be raised by the city through crowdfunding. A sales contract is expected to be signed within this fiscal year, and post-purchase, the blade will be owned by the foundation. They've also disclosed plans to host an exhibition by the end of the next fiscal year. To guide this significant purchase, the city set up an evaluation committee consisting of five sword experts. Their task was to weigh in on the importance of the acquisition and its asset value. Their assessment? Given that the sword is of national treasure caliber and considering its potential economic impact, the 300 million yen price tag is justified. Number 1. Yamatorige 500 million yen. The Yamatorige, valued at 500 million yen, is a celebrated blade from the Kamakura period and is designated a national treasure of Japan. This masterful creation is believed to be the work of the renowned Fukuoka Ichimonji school that flourished during its era. Originating in Bizen province, which is modern day Okayama prefecture, this school produced many noticeable swordsmiths. This sword is often hailed as the pinnacle of Bizen swords. The name Yamatorige, which translates to mountain bird feather, is derived from its blade pattern, which is reminiscent of the delicate and splendid feathers of a mountain bird. This pattern, known as Hamon, is created during the sword's tempering process where the heated blade is quenched in water. It's one of the most vital features when appreciating a Japanese sword. In 1556, during a campaign in Joshu Shirai, the daimyo Uesugi Kenshin received the Yamatorige as a gift from the Lord of Shirai Castle, Nagao Norikage. Known for his formidable prowess in battle and often referred to as the God of War, Uesuki Kenshin cherished this sword deeply. It later became one of the treasured 35 swords of Uesuki Kagekatsu, Kenshin's adopted son and the head of the Uesuki clan. 
From there, it has been passed down as a cherished heirloom of the Uesugi family. Following the end of World War II, the Yamaturige moved from the Uesugi family to a sword enthusiast in Okayama Prefecture. Later, in 1997, it was entrusted to the Okayama Prefectural Museum. In Satoshi City, Okayama, where the Yamatorige was originally forged, a campaign called the Yamatorige Return Home Project was launched in November 2018 to buy back the locally born treasured blade. The project gained widespread support, not only from within Okayama Prefecture, but from all over Japan and even internationally. Donations exceeded the target of 500 million yen. It was announced on March 17, 2020, that a purchase agreement was established with a private owner residing in Okayama. The price for which the Yamatorige was bought is believed to be the highest ever for a Japanese sword. Occasionally, privately owned Japanese swords are purchased at high prices from abroad, resulting in them leaving Japan. By municipalities acquiring these historic blades, they prevent these invaluable artifacts from flowing overseas. Now, this sword is in the possession of Satoshi City. It is stored in the Bizen Osofune Sword Museum and is displayed to the public approximately once a year. Apart from the three swords introduced today, there are many invaluable swords that are priceless. For example, the Mikazuki Munichika, a national treasure currently held at the Tokyo National Museum, is not on the market. However, if it were to be priced, it's believed that it could command a value equal to or even exceeding that of the Yamatorige, meaning it could be worth over 500 million yen. In addition, there are other extremely valuable swords, such as those classified as imperial properties, or gyobutsu, which belong to the emperor. While they don't have a specific price tag, their historical and artistic value is immense. As we've explored, these blades are not just weapons, but masterpieces of art and symbols of Japan's rich history. If you're ever in Japan, I highly recommend visiting the museums and exhibitions that showcase these treasures. Remember, while some swords have price tags, their historical and artistic value is truly immeasurable. In the history of Japan, there are many famous swords, each often associated with historical anecdotes. Among these, there are swords believed to possess supernatural powers or curses, known and feared as Yoto, or cursed swords. Even today, these mythical swords frequently appear in anime, video games, and other creative works gaining widespread popularity. In this video, we will introduce the top five most cursed swords from Japanese history. Number five, Hotaru Maru. Hotaru Maru is a long tachi or o tachi, believed to be crafted by the swordsmith Lai Kunitoshi during the Kamakura period. An o tachi refers to a large type of tachi with a blade length over 35.4 inches, primarily used as a weapon for mounted warriors in battlefields. Hotaru Maru was passed down to the Aso family, who served at the chief priests of the Aso shrine in Kumamoto Prefecture. This sword has an impressive total length of about 53.5 inches, with the blade itself measuring approximately 39.4 inches. The name Hotaru Maru originates from an anecdote related to Aso Korezumi, a priest of Aso Shrine. In 1336, during the Battle of Tatarahama, Korezumi wielded this sword to aid a certain general, but the battle ended in defeat. A mysterious event occurred with the sword that night. Despite suffering from chips and damage in the fierce battle, the sword's fragments flew back to it, fitting themselves back into the damaged areas and repairing the blade autonomously. This spectacle 
resembling fireflies, led Korizumi to name the sword Hotaru Maru. However, there's a sorrowful legend associated with Hotaru Maru. The sword later came into the possession of the Mitai family, which eventually fell into ruin. A surviving warrior, hiding on a mountain path at night with the sword strapped to his waist, witnessed it suddenly emit a pale blue light. This light exposed him to the enemy, and realizing his imminent capture, he is said to have taken his own life. Thus the mysteriously glowing Hotaru Maru was later treasured as an artifact of the Aso Shrine. It was designated a national treasure in the early Showa period, but went missing during the post-World War II turmoil and remains unaccounted for to this day. Number 4. Nenekiri Maru Nenekiri Maru is a sword created during the Nambokucho period, known as a cursed sword that was used to slay demons. The most notable feature of this sword is its size, with a total length of 127.6 inches, a blade length of 85.3 inches, and a remarkable weight of 53 pounds. It is one of the largest Japanese swords. Given its immense size, it is believed to have been crafted for ceremonial dedication. This sword is currently housed in the Niko Futarasan Shrine in Tochigi Prefecture. The origin of the name Nenekinimaru comes from a legend. According to folklore, there once was a demon named Nene in the mountains of Niko who caused trouble in the village. One day, this sword, housed in the Niko Futarasan shrine, began to rattle and unsheathed itself. It flew out of the hall and soared towards the demon. The startled demon fled through the mountains and streams, but the sword eventually cornered it in front of the shrine and swiftly cut it down, before returning smoothly to its scabbard. From this tale, the name Nenekirimaru was derived. As for the demon's true identity, there are theories that it was the famous Japanese demon Kappa, or that it represented a natural disaster personified as a demon. The creator of Nenekirimaru, made in the Nambokucho period, remains unknown. Some speculate it could have been Sanjo Munichika, who forged one of the Tenkagoken, Five Swords Under Heaven, Mikazuki Munichika. Traditionally, the sword is displayed on the skin of a deer caught in the mountains during an annual festival held in April at the shrine, a ritual that has continued for over 1,200 years. Number 3. Daikiri Daikiri, also known as Lightning Cutter, is a legendary sword with the peculiar myth of being able to slice through invisible objects. It was the beloved sword of Tachibana Dōsetsu, a warlord of the Sengoku period. While many famous swords are known to have been made by renowned swordsmiths, this one was unsigned, making it relatively unknown until it came into his possession. Dōsetsu, known as a military genius and for his profound loyalty to his lord, led around 140 battles in his lifetime boasting an undefeated record when in command. Originally, the sword was called Chidori, or Thousand Birds, due to a bird decoration on its handle. The name Raikiri, or Lightning Cutter, originated from an extraordinary tale. Around 1548, during a hot day, Dōsetsu was napping under a large tree. When a sudden thunderstorm approached, as lightning struck towards the tree, he swiftly drew his sword and allegedly sliced through the lightning, narrowly saving his life. From this incident, the sword was named Laikiri. There's also a variant of the story where he is said to have cut down a thunder god, not the lightning. It may seem hard to believe, but in reality, Dōsetsu became physically impaired in his left leg as a result of this incident. Despite his disability, 
he continued to participate in battles, riding in a palanquin. His appearance on the battlefield, commanding and defeating enemies from his palanquin, earned him the fearsome nickname Laijin, or Thunder God. Currently, the Laikiri is housed in the Tachibana Historical Museum in Fukuoka Prefecture. Intriguingly, some speculate that the notches on the blade's tip might be remnants from when the sword allegedly sliced through lightning. Number 2. Onimaru Kunitsuna Onimaru Kunitsuna is a masterpiece created by the famous swordsmith Awatakuchi Kunitsuna during the Kamakura period. This sword is currently a part of the imperial regalia known as Gyobutsu. Due to its status, it is rarely exhibited to the public. The blade length of this sword is 30.8 inches and it is known for its exceptionally pronounced curvature, a rarity among Japanese swords. The name Onimaru Kunitsuna is derived from a legend. The fifth regent of the Kamakura shogunate, Hojo Tokiyori, then the most powerful man in Japan, was tormented by a demon in his dreams. No exorcism was effective, and he was weakening rapidly. One night, an old man who called himself Onimaru Kunitsuna appeared in his dream, saying, I've rusted and can't be drawn from my sheath because I was held by corrupt hands. Clean my rust, and I'll vanquish the demon for you. Following the dream, he cleaned the rust off his sword. After care, he propped the sword by his bedside. The sword fell, severing the leg of a nearby brazier. When he examined the severed decoration, it resembled the face of the demon from his dreams. After this incident, he recovered. Since then, this sword has been passed down as a treasured weapon of the Hojo family. Onimaru Kunitsuna has had many owners throughout history. However, almost every house that possessed this sword has perished. The Hojo and Ashikaga families who once possessed this sword eventually met their downfall. Subsequently, the sword came into the hands of Toyotomi Hideyoshi, the most powerful shogun of his time. Sensing something ominous about the sword, he entrusted it to the Honami family, renowned sword appraisers. After the fall of the Toyotomi clan, all their swords were transferred to the Tokugawa family. However, Tokugawa Ieyasu refused to accept this sword, fearing its ominous reputation. In the Meiji era, as the Honami family declined, the sword was presented to the emperor and has since remained a private property of the imperial family. Number 1. The Muramasa Swords During the Edo period, there was a sword feared as a yōto, demonic blade, which samurai hesitated to possess. This was the Muramasa. The term Muramasa refers to both the name of a school of swordsmiths from the Ise province, Kuwana, and the swords forged by this school. A distinguishing feature of Muramasa's swords is the consistent blade patterns on both sides, exuding a commanding style. It is said that every samurai aspired to own such a coveted piece at least once in their lifetime. While Muramasa's swords were popular as masterpieces, as the Edo period progressed, they became notorious as cursed blades against the Tokugawa family. Tokugawa Ieyasu established the Edo shogunate, unified Japan, and built a peace that lasted for over 260 years. Despite achieving unification, numerous misfortunes occurred throughout his life. During his alliance with Oda Nobunaga, his primary wife, Tsukiyama Nono, and his eldest son, Matsudaira Nobuyasu, were suspected of collusion with the Takeda clan. As a result, under Nobunaga's orders, they both committed seppuku using a Muramasa blade. In another incident, during the summer campaign of the Siege of Osaka, the formidable warrior Sanada Yukimura 
surprised Ies's main camp, and the short blade he hurled was, astonishingly, a Munamasa. The legends of Munamasa's cursed blades continue. In fact, even before Ies's birth, Munamasa's blades had been bringing misfortune upon the Tokugawa family. Firstly, we talk about Ies's grandfather, the renowned general Matsudaira Kiyoyasu. In 1530, while on a campaign to subdue enemy lords, Kiyoyasu was suddenly assassinated in his camp by one of his own retainers. This retainer mistakenly believed that Kiyoyasu had killed his father. Due to this incident, the Matsudaira clan lost its unity and began to decline. Shockingly, the blade used in this assassination was a Muramasa. Next is Ieyasu's father, Matsudaira Hirotara. After the assassination of Kiyoyasu, Hirotara, at a young age, inherited the leadership and managed to maintain his domain only by submitting to neighboring lords. In 1549, during a drinking session, one of his close aides, Iwamatsu Hachiya, suddenly went berserk and killed Hirotara with a side blade. Once again, the blade used was a Muramasa. In essence, Ieyasu lost his grandfather, father, son, and even his wife, all due to the cursed Muramasa blades. Ieyasu, realizing that Munamasa's swords were cursed, forbade all his retainers from possessing a Munamasa blade. Additionally, due to its reputation as a cursed sword that brought harm to the Tokugawa family, many daimyos related to the Tokugawa began to discard their Munamasa swords. The Munamasa swords, historically known as the most feared cursed swords, continue to be a subject of fascination and are frequently featured in various works of fiction. The name Muramasa is often synonymous with the idea of an cursed sword. Several Muramasa swords still exist and can be viewed in museums across Japan. Throughout its history, the Japanese sword has been treated with various meanings as a weapon for samurai, as a work of art, and as a sacred object believed to be inhabited by gods. Throughout its long history, a variety of swords have been created, including those that demonstrate the incredibly high level of craftsmanship of the swordsmiths of the time, and those with astonishing shapes. Today, we will introduce three katana with unique features that still exist. Number one, Fujiwara Kanenaga. This sword showcases the incredibly high skill of a master craftsman. It features the representative Japanese waka poem, Hyakunin Ishu, engraved in tiny characters on the blade. This sword is a wakizashi, a short sword made by Fujiwara Kanenaga, a swordsmith who was active in the early 1900s. He was a leading swordsmith of his time, known for devising sword forging, which uses stainless steel. In the early 1900s, Japanese swords carried to the harsh front lines of wars suffered from rust. On the front lines, facing the enemy, there was no time to leisurely care for swords. For the Navy, exposed to the corrosive effects of sea salt, the problem of rust was even more severe. No matter how sharp a Japanese sword may be, it is meaningless if rusted. Reflecting this situation, there was a demand for rust-resistant military swords. In response to this, Fujiwara Kanenaga began to develop stainless steel swords. Having previously succeeded in making stainless steel kitchen knives, he embarked on this new challenge. After much trial and error, Kanenaga finally completed a stainless steel sword. 
This sword overcame the historical weakness of Japanese swords, their susceptibility to rust, making it, in a sense, the final form of the Japanese sword. His stainless steel swords quickly spread and were widely adopted by the Japanese military. Kanenaga was also skilled in the art of sword engraving, creating several stainless steel swords of high artistic value. Even army generals of the time used his stainless steel swords, marking them as historically valuable. Interestingly, as the demand for swords declined, many swordsmiths turned to knife making, and the techniques developed for stainless steel swords were passed down to the creation of today's stainless steel kitchen knives. This sword is known as one of the existing pieces created by him, showcasing his astonishing craftsmanship as a swordsmith. The blade, which is only 12.36 inches long, is engraved with the Hyakunin Ishu poems and their poets. The characters are so small that they require a magnifying glass to be read. All 100 poets associated with these poems have been intricately carved into the sword. This piece, created about 100 years ago, was made entirely by hand. The mystery deepens as to how these engravings were achieved. The Hyakunin Ishu refers to a collection of poems from 100 poets from ancient Japan, each contributing one poem. These famous poets and their poems are still celebrated today through the game of Karuta. The sword crafted by Kanenaga is currently on permanent display at the Sword Museum Sekikaji Tradition Museum in Gifu Prefecture. Number two, Dusei To. Dusei To, the meteorite sword, is a highly unusual sword made in the 19th century, crafted from meteorite material. The inspiration for creating this sword came from a samurai named Enomoto Takeaki. Enomoto, who was also a politician, served as the plenipotentiary ambassador to Russia from 1874 for about four years. During his stay, he was shown a sword made from a meteorite that had been presented to the former Russian emperor Alexander I, sparking his dream of creating a sword from meteorite. Having a strong interest in mineralogy and iron-making technology, it was natural for him to be intrigued by the idea of making a Japanese sword from meteorite material. A turning point came in 1890. A peculiar stone was discovered by someone searching for pickling stones in the upper reaches of a river in Toyama Prefecture. Due to its unusual heaviness for its size, Further investigation revealed it to be a meteorite, a discovery confirmed academically. Upon hearing the news, Enomoto promptly purchased the meteorite at his own expense, immediately setting in motion the creation of a sword using the meteorite. He commissioned the master swordsmith Okayoshi Kunimune. The forging process began with about 8.8 .8 pounds of iron being extracted from the meteorite for use in the sword's creation. This endeavor was the first of its kind in Japan, using meteorite to make a Japanese sword, and Kunimune faced challenges working with the softer meteorite iron compared to regular iron, even praying at shrines hoping for success. After much effort, a successful blend was achieved by mixing 70% meteorite iron with 30% tamahagane, the traditional steel used in sword making, forging a sword that was both durable and sharp. This resulted in the creation of four swords, named Ryusei To, meteorite swords, including both long and short swords. Initially, the swords were plain, 
but after polishing, a pattern resembling the grain of Zelkova wood emerged on the blades, displaying unique and beautiful temper patterns. The distinctiveness of these patterns, different from those on typical swords, moved Kunimune deeply, attributing them to the meteorite iron's unique properties. Moreover, in a document addressed to Enomoto, Kunimune mentioned the sword's exceptional sharpness, suggesting their practical usability. Of the four swords completed, three were given to Enomoto, and one of the long swords was presented to the crown prince of the time. Currently, one of these swords is housed in the Toyama City Science Museum, where it is featured in regular exhibitions. Number 3. Hajano Ontachi Hajano Ontachi is known as the largest sword in Japan. It was crafted in the 19th century by a swordsmith named Fujiwara Kunitsuna and seven of his disciples. During the final years of the Edo period, in the city of Kuramatsu Yamaguchi Prefecture, where Hanaoka Hachimangu Shrine is located, the ideology of revering the emperor and expelling barbarians, or Son no Joi, was spreading and gaining traction among the samurai and local residents alike. This ideology centered on venerating the emperor as the rightful ruler of Japan and adopting a xenophobic stance towards foreigners. Around this time, the arrival of Commodore Matthew Perry with his armed fleet an event known in Japan as the Black Ships forced the country to confront the overwhelming military power of American warships. This event heightened the sense of crisis in Japan regarding foreign threats, spreading the ideology further. This ideology was in direct opposition to the ruling Tokugawa shogunate, which was moving towards opening the country leading to conflicts throughout Japan. In 1859, to commemorate the 1150th anniversary of the founding of Hanaoka Hachimangu Shrine, a grand festival was planned. It was decided to create a sword for offering at the festival, embodying the wish to dispel malevolence and build a peaceful society. Thus, the sword was crafted to represent the idea of vanquishing evil and demonstrating righteousness, known as the Hajano Ontachi, Sword of Vanquishing Evil. Following the traditional sword-making methods, Kunitsuna insisted on creating this sword using the same techniques. With his disciples, he forged 2,480 pounds of iron sand, during the quenching process, a step in the sword-making process, the sword's immense size made it impossible to prepare enough water in the workshop. Instead, they dammed a river to immerse the sword for quenching. The finished sword boasts a blade length of about 136 inches, an overall length of about 183 inches, and weighs about 165 pounds, making it the largest sword ever made. This size reflects the people's desire for peace at the time. Additionally, it is evident that swords have been treated not only as weapons or art pieces, but also as sacred objects believed to be inhabited by gods. After its dedication at the Grand Festival, this sword was frequently used in festivals until around 1955, for about 20 years, it was carried through the town by a large group during the summer festival. It is said that the sight of 30 to 40 young men taking turns carrying the great sword was very heroic. In 1973, this sword was designated as the first tangible cultural property of Kuramatsu City. Today, 
The sword is stored in the treasure hall of Hanaoka Hachimandu Shrine and is publicly displayed about twice a year, including during the autumn festival, allowing people to witness its majestic appearance. Japanese traditional knives are recognized as first class by professional chefs worldwide for their sharpness, akin to that of Japanese swords. This is partly due to the history of swordsmiths. For over a thousand years, swordsmiths have been creating numerous swords for battles, playing a vital role. However, with the arrival of peaceful times in the 18th century, the demand for swords declined. Many master craftsmen then shifted from sword making to knife making, passing on their swordsmithing techniques to knife crafting. This is why Japanese knives possess such exceptional sharpness. I want everyone to experience the excellent sharpness and the beauty of the blades of Japanese knives. At Hocho Knife, you can purchase knives online made by Japanese knife artisans. They offer a wide variety of knives, so please find and purchase your unique knife. For the product page, please check the description of this video. Japanese swords, appearing throughout Japan's history, are known globally not just as mere weapons, but as symbols of the samurai spirit. However, among them, there are some swords that have left a cruel history. In this episode, we will introduce the top five most infamous katana known for their terrifying history. Number five, Izumi no Kami Kanesara. Izumi no Kami Kanesara is known as the beloved sword of Hijikata Toshizo, the vice commander of the Shinsengumi who made his mark in the 19th century. This sword was crafted in 1867 by the 11th generation of the swordsmith Kanesara, who had been active since the 14th century, with the swordsmith's name becoming the name of the sword itself. Toshizo was a samurai active in the 19th century, known as the vice commander of the Shinsengumi, a police organization in Kyoto. At that time in Japan, there was a growing force advocating for the Son no Joi, revere the emperor, expel the barbarians ideology, which posed a threat to the Edo shogunate that held power. The Shinsengumi was formed to protect Kyoto from these imperial loyalists, consisting of a group of skilled swordsmen. Known as the Demon Vice Commander, Feared not only by enemies, but also by allies, he was a very strict and ruthless individual. Originally, as the Shinsengumi was a group of swordsmen, it included many hot-headed individuals and lacked unity. To bring the organization together, he established strict rules. Those who broke these rules were mercilessly killed or ordered to commit seppuku. It is said that the number of people he killed within the Shinsengumi for breaking the rules outnumbered the enemies he killed. Respecting the then leader of the Shinsengumi, he took on the role of the hated enforcer so the leader wouldn't have to punish the members himself. This sword was entrusted to Toshizo by the military commanders of Kyoto at the time who were responsible for maintaining the city's security. From then on, for about two years until his death in battle, he favored this sword and used it in numerous actual combats. After his death, when the sword was returned to his family home, its blade bore multiple nicks as if to tell the tales of the fierce battles it had seen. Due to polishing in the 20th century, these nicks are no longer visible, but the blade has become slightly thinner as a result. Currently, this sword is preserved at the Hijikata Toshizo Museum in Tokyo. Incidentally, 
from the wear on the grip of the sword. It is speculated that his way of holding the sword was unique, with both hands close together near the guard, exerting force with the index finger and thumb. This unique grip suggests that he indeed performed the morotezuki, a thrust at the opponent's throat, which he was known to be skilled at. Number 4. Nanatsudo Otoshi Nanatsudo Otoshi is a sword known for its terrifying sharpness, said to have simultaneously cut through seven torsos. This sword was crafted by Kanefusa, a swordsmith who led a famous forging lineage. His creations are renowned for their superior cutting ability and distinctive blade patterns. The name of this sword derives from a test cut in which it was said to have sliced through seven torsos at once. In Japan, there has long been a practice known as Tameshigiri, testing the sharpness of swords. This involved stacking the bodies of deceased criminals and testing how many could be bisected with a single sword strike. While this was a method to verify a sword's sharpness, it often attracted many spectators, turning it into a spectacle of sorts. The use of human bodies for test cutting is rare globally and has been criticized as ethically problematic. The test cut for this sword took place in 1681. Due to its creation by a master craftsman, the individual selected for the test cutting was someone highly skilled in swordsmanship. The tester climbed a ladder and struck down as if jumping onto the seven stacked corpses. As a result, all the bodies were bisected. From this event, the sword was named Nanatsudo Odoshi. Whether this anecdote is true remains unverifiable today, but the feat of cutting through seven torsos has remained the highest record for test cutting. This sword is well known as a symbol of the cruel traditions of that era in Japan, alongside its sharpness. Currently, this sword is designated as an important Japanese sword and is owned by Wakedo, a prestigious sword specialty store. Additionally, the handle of this sword is engraved with Nanatsudo Otoshi, a practice common at the time where the records made during test cutting were engraved on the sword's handle, serving as proof of its sharp cutting ability. Number 3. Yamamba Giri Kunihiro Yamamba Giri Kunihiro is a famous sword known for having cut down a mountain witch referred to as a Yamamba in Japanese folklore. This sword was crafted in the 16th century by the renowned swordsmith Horikawa Kunihiro, who was highly sought after by many warlords and daimyo of his time. Interestingly, this sword is a copy of another famous sword, yet it is considered his masterpiece. The sword's owner was a warlord who served the Hojo clan, but was defeated in the siege of Odawara, leading to the confiscation of his territory. Subsequently, the sword came into the possession of a retainer of the Hojo family, Ishihara. The name of this sword derives from a legend that he cut down a Yamamba, a mountain witch from ancient Japanese folklore. One day, while walking in the mountains with his pregnant wife, she suddenly went into labor. By chance, they found a house inhabited by an old woman. After entrusting his wife to the old woman, he went out to look for medicine. Upon his return, he discovered the old woman eating the newborn. In a fit of rage, he cut down the old woman with his sword. This event has been told as a legend, resulting in the sword's name being Yamambagiri, or Mountain Witch Cutter. This sword which became legendary from this anecdote, 
leaves us questioning whether it truly cut down a supernatural being. In fact, in Japan at the time, there were customs of women going into the mountains to give birth and of elderly women being abandoned in the mountains due to food shortages. It is said that the mythical Yamamba was modeled on women who retreated to the mountains for these reasons. Therefore, it is possible that the Yamamba he claimed to have cut was actually an ordinary woman, and he spread the story that it was a monster to boast of his bravery. This sword still exists today, and in 2023, Ashikaga City in Tochiki Prefecture announced its purchase from the original owner for 300 million yen. The fact that it was made by a master craftsman and the impact of the legend of cutting down a Yamamba are thought to bring significant economic benefits. Another famous sword crafted by Horikawa Kunihiro is Hote Kunihiro. This sword is distinctive for having an engraving of Hote, a god, on the blade. Interestingly, there is a meaning behind this engraving. It is said that he engraved the image of Hote as a representation of himself praying for the repose of the souls he had slain. Each sword he crafted is known as a masterpiece and has cut through numerous individuals. Thus, it is believed he created this sword to console the souls of the deceased. Number two. Hizen Tadahiro. Hizen Tadahiro is a sword known as the beloved weapon of the feared assassin Okada Izo during the late Edo period of the 19th century. This sword was crafted around the 17th century by the legendary swordsmith Tadahiro. Izo was born in 1838 as the eldest son in a family of low ranking samurai. Due to his status, the salary from his lord was insufficient to live on, leading him to a difficult childhood. Eventually, he became a student of Takechi Zuizan, who would later emerge as a leader of the Sonno Joi, revere the emperor, expel the barbarians movement. It was then that Izo's life as an assassin began. In 1861, Zuizan formed the Tosa Kino Party, a group advocating for the Sono Joy ideology. Izo, eager to prove useful to his master despite his lack of formal education, joined the group. However, he possessed an exceptional talent for swordsmanship. Zuizan recognized this talent and entrusted him with the assassination of important figures. Subsequently, Izo justified his assassinations as acts of Tenchu, heavenly punishment, and carried out numerous missions using his beloved sword, Hizen Tadehiro. He became known as one of the era's four great assassins, feared as Izo the killer. He continued to undertake any mission to gain his master's favor. However, since his motivation for assassination was solely to be acknowledged by his master, he gradually became akin to a killing puppet. His methods were brutal. One of his victims was tied to a bridge and left to die in public display. Although they once flourished, their momentum was dramatically halted in 1863 as opposing forces gained strength, leading to the capture of many of their members including Izo and his mentor Takechi. A tragedy ensued when Takechi, fearing that Izo might confess everything if left to his own devices, attempted to poison him. The attempt was unsuccessful, but upon learning of this betrayal, Izo, who had until then endured torture without confession, finally confessed everything. He had killed many people for the sake of his revered master. But in the end, he was betrayed by one of the few people he had opened his heart to. Following this, 
he was beheaded and his head was displayed publicly. At that time, he left behind a death poem. For you, my devoted heart was like bubbles in water. After they vanished, the sky became clear and tranquil. Despite being considered of shallow learning, Izo's final words betray a certain nobility. It is said that the existing sword might not actually have been his beloved Hizen Tarihiro. This is because the Hizen Tarihiro he frequently used was reportedly damaged during an assassination, and its whereabouts have since been unknown. Even if the sword found today is not his original, there remains a possibility that his true beloved sword might still be discovered somewhere. Number 1. Kasen Kanasara Kasen Kanasara is a sword known for its owner having cut down 36 of his own vassals. This sword was crafted in the 17th century by the second generation of the swordsmith Izumi no Kami Kanesara. The sword was favored by Hosokawa Tadaoki, a powerful daimyo of the Sengoku period. His family was known as a distinguished and historical lineage, serving the highest authorities in Japan for generations. Tadaoki was celebrated for his exceptional bravery and numerous military achievements. However, he was also known for his violent temper, described in some documents as a lord with the shortest temper under heaven. In 1582, after the death of his lord, he swore allegiance to the next ruler, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and served him until Hideyoshi's death. Then, in 1600, the largest battle in Japan, the Battle of Sekigahara, erupted. Tadaoki played a significant role in this battle, driven by his past grudges. His grudge was against a colleague and rival from his time serving under Hideyoshi, the warlord Ishida Mitsunari. Driven by this deep resentment, he decided to join the Eastern Army, opposing Mitsunari's Western Army. His grudge was so profound that he is said to have taken 136 enemy heads during this battle. His valor in the battle earned him a vast amount of land, elevating him to a position of great power. The fearsome reputation of him is also reflected in the anecdote related to the name Kasen Kanesara. Even after passing the leadership to his son, he strictly monitored the performance of his son's vassals, leading to the execution of a total of 36 vassals. This sword, used during those executions, was named after the son Juroku Kasen, 36 immortal poets of the Heian period, thus acquiring the name Kasen Kanesara. Subsequently, this sword has been passed down as a treasured heirloom of the Hosokawa family and is currently preserved in a museum established by the Hosokawa family. The sword's mount, known as Kasen Koshirae, dates back to the 17th century. This unique design was devised by Taraoki himself and later became the foundation for the famous Higo Koshirae. The swords crafted by the swordsmith of this blade are focused on practicality and functionality, often said to lack artistic appeal. However, his choice of such a simple blade and his infusion of unique aesthetic sensibilities into the mount are recognized as a testament to his distinctive taste. The Japanese Sword, representing the samurai culture of Japan, boasts a history of over a thousand years, frequently appearing in ancient Japanese history. Among them, several famous swords have played significant roles at pivotal moments in history and their stories are passed down alongside the legendary tales of emperors and samurai. 
among the many renowned swords, those that have been passed down within the imperial family are referred to as Gyobutsu. In this chapter, we will introduce three of the most famous swords considered Gyobutsu. Number one, Tsurumaru Kuninaga. Tsurumaru Kuninaga is a tachi made by the swordsmith Gojo Kuninaga toward the end of the Heian period. It features a beautifully strong curve, representing the finest masterpiece among the extant works signed by Kuninaga. The name Tsurumaru is said to be derived from a crane circle pattern that was on a lost mounting. This sword has long been recognized as a famous blade and was the favored sword of the warlord Hojo Saratoki. There is an intriguing anecdote associated with this sword. In the 13th century, the real power in Japan was in the hands of the Kamakura shogunate's top, Hojo Saratoki. He took on the regency at the young age of 14 and led the government as the foremost authority in Japan. At that time, Japan faced two invasions by the Mongol forces, which greatly destabilized the domestic situation. Amid this turmoil, a significant conflict developed between two powerful supporters of the Hojo family, Taira no Yonitsuna and Arachi Yasumori. Taira plotted against Arachi by falsely informing Hojo Saratoki that Arachi aspired to become the shogun. Believing this, Hojo Saratoki conspired with Taira to destroy the Arachi family. As a result of Taira's preemptive attack, Arachi was defeated, and the Arachi family was completely annihilated. During this conflict, the family's treasured sword, Tsurumaru Kuninaga, was buried along with the family. As time passed, Hojo Saratoki developed a deep desire for the Arachi family's treasured Tsurumaru Kuninaga. He came up with the idea to dig up the grave where the sword was buried to take it for himself. He went to the cemetery, exhumed the Adachi family's grave, and took the sword into his own hands. He cherished the sword throughout his life, but in his later years, he succumbed to alcohol and passed away at the young age of 41. After his death, the sword was dedicated to a shrine where it was adorned with the crane circle pattern on its scabbard. It appears that, at that time, it was customary for the shogunate to include the crane circle pattern when dedicating swords to shrines. In the 16th century, the sword came into the hands of Japan's greatest warlord of the time, Oda Nobunaga, and subsequently passed through the hands of several influential figures. After changing owners numerous times, the sword was finally presented to Emperor Meiji by the Date family in 1901. Many of the swords considered to be of significant heritage play roles in court rituals, and this sword is used during the New Year's Gantan Sai ceremony held at the Imperial Palace on January 1st treated as an important treasure within the imperial family. Today, it is managed by the imperial household agency and is rarely seen by the public. The blade length of this sword is approximately 31 inches. It is known for its high curvature and flexible blade with a sparkling grain pattern on the blade that is considered exceptionally beautiful. Despite being a work from about 1,000 years ago, it is also highly valued for its excellent state of preservation. Of the few remaining works by Kuninaga, only four are known, and researchers at the Tokyo National Museum consider this sword to be the finest among them. Number 2. 
いちごひとふりいちごひとふり is a masterpiece by Yoshihiro Awataguchi, one of the three most excellent swordsmiths known as Tenka San Saku in history. The name いちごひとふり signifies a tachi, Japanese long sword, that Yoshihiro crafted as a once in a lifetime endeavor. Highlighting his predominant focus on making shorter swords. This naming reflects Yoshihiro's rarity in crafting such a distinguished tachi. Originally, this sword was passed down through the powerful Mori clan before being presented to Toyotomi Hideyoshi, where it then became one of Hideyoshi's most treasured swords. Toyotomi Hideyoshi. A prominent warlord of the 16th century is renowned for unifying Japan during its tumultuous period. Remarkably, Hideyoshi was born into a peasant and Ashigaru, foot soldier family, a rarity among daimyo and samurai, who typically hailed from warrior class lineages. At the age of 15, declaring his ambition to become a samurai, Hideyoshi left his birthplace, eventually becoming a retainer of the warlord Oda Nobunaga and rising significantly in status. Following Nobunaga's death, Hideyoshi achieved the unification of Japan. On the path to unification, the Ichigo Hitofuri, presented by the Mori clan, became one of Hideyoshi's favorites. Known for his unparalleled love for swords, Hideyoshi collected famous swords from across the nation. By rewarding warriors who achieved military exploits with these prized blades, Japanese swords became symbols of status among samurai and nobility. Among the many renowned swords he owned, Hideyoshi cherished Ichigo Hitofuri the most, storing it in a special box named. Ichi no Hako and safeguarding it carefully. In 1598, after Hideyoshi's death, a fierce struggle for power ensued across Japan to determine his successor. A tragic event for the sword occurred in 1615 during the historical battle known as the Siege of Osaka Summer Campaign, which erupted between the Tokugawa clan. Aiming for control and the Toyotomi clan without Hideyoshi. The battle led to the demise of the Toyotomi clan and the burning and fall of Osaka Castle, their stronghold. During this chaos, Ichigo Hitofuri, which had been carefully preserved inside Osaka Castle even after Hideyoshi's death, was also consumed by flames. Thus, The sword shared a tragic fate with the Toyotomi clan. Following the victory in the battle, which led to the unification under Tokugawa Ieyasu, numerous famous swords, including Ichigo Hitofuri, were discovered among the ruins of Osaka Castle. Concerned about the potential loss of these precious blades, Ieyasu decided to have Ichigo Hitofuri reforged. Subsequently, the sword was restored by the Tokugawa family's swordsmiths. After its restoration, Ichigo Hitofuri was passed down within the Tokugawa family and remained in their possession until the end of the Edo period. In 1863, the sword was presented to Emperor Komei by the then head of the Tokugawa family, marking its transition. To a royal treasure. Since then, Ichigo Hitofuri has been inherited by successive emperors and remains a part of the imperial regalia to this day. Number three, Kogarasu Maru. Kogarasu Maru is a sword believed to have been crafted by the legendary swordsmith Amakuni in Nara Prefecture during the mid Heian period. It is also known as the oldest existing Japanese sword. In Japan, 
a law enacted in 701 required swordsmiths to inscribe their name on the tang of the swords they crafted. Amakuni, adhering to this law, inscribed his name on the tang and created a curved Shinogi Zukuri Japanese sword, leading to his reverence as the ancestor of the Japanese sword. The blade length of this sword is 24.8 inches with a curvature of 0.51 inches. The distinguishing feature of this sword lies in its shape. It was crafted during the transitional period from straight swords to curved swords, resulting in a double-edged tip rather than a single-edged one. This construction, designed for both stabbing and cutting, is said to be a pioneering design, with this sword being a representative example, hence also known as Kogarasu Maru style. The name Kogarasu Maru derives from a legend involving its owner, Emperor Kammu, who established Kyoto as the capital and built a vast city. One day, while gazing at the sky from the newly constructed southern palace, a giant three-legged crow appeared from between the clouds. This crow, serving the sun goddess Amaterasu, was known as Yatagarasu. As it flew over the palace, Emperor Kammu beckoned it with his scepter, and the crow descended in an arc before the throne. I come bearing a sword on behalf of the Ise Grand Shrine, it declared, before taking flight again. Where the crow had been, a sword was left behind. Recognizing it as a rare masterpiece crafted by Amakuni, it was treasured as a divine gift for the protection of the realm and named Kogarasu Maru, meaning Little Crow after the bird that delivered it. This sword re-emerged in history in the year 939 during the Tengyo Rebellion. It was bestowed upon Taira no Saramuri by the imperial court to defeat Taira no Masakaro, who proclaimed himself king and established a new government. From then on, Kogarasu Maru was inherited as a treasured sword of the Taira clan and frequently mentioned in historical texts. In 1185, during the historic Battle of Dan Nuda, the Taira clan was defeated, and it was said that Kogarasu Maru sank to the bottom of the sea along with them, becoming lost. However, as time passed and during the Edo period, it was discovered that a sword named Kogarasu Maru was preserved in the house of a descendant of the Taira clan. In the 19th century, this sword was presented to Emperor Meiji. Today, it is treated as an imperial treasure, considered to be the Kogarasu Maru handed down from the Taira clan, and is preserved by the National Cultural Properties Organization. In present-day Japan, numerous famous swords that have appeared throughout Japanese history still exist. They are preserved in shrines and museums or owned by private individuals. Among them, those with particular historical value are designated as national treasures. Currently, there are 122 swords recognized as national treasures. These treasured swords often have legendary stories associated with them, and some were once owned by shoguns or prominent feudal lords. In this video, I will introduce the top six most valuable swords that are designated as national treasures. Number six, Atsu Toshiro. Atsu Toshiro is a short sword known as a treasured blade 
passed down through the Ashikaga shogunate family. Crafted in the 13th to 14th century by Toshiro Yoshimitsu, one of the three great swordsmiths of Japan, this sword is a testament to his status as a master craftsman of his time. Possessing a sword made by him was considered a status symbol, and it is believed that warlords during the Sengoku period admired these swords greatly. This sword, being a famous blade, passed through the hands of various warlords. Records indicate that the ninth shogun, Ashikaga Yoshihisa, possessed it when he went to subdue a rival warlord in 1487. After the fall of the shogunate, the sword left the shogunno family, changing hands among merchants and renowned warriors. At one point, it was even used by a warrior to commit seppuku. Despite its many owners, in 1664, the sword was presented to the fourth Tokugawa shogun by a certain warlord. In return, it is said that the Tokugawa shogunno family awarded the warlord a thousand gold coins, an amount estimated to be around 120 million yen in modern currency. This high valuation reflects the sword's significant worth. The sword's journey through various hands attests to its status as an exceptionally renowned blade. The most distinguishing feature of this sword lies in its thickness. The blade length is about 8.58 inches, with a base width of about 0.75 inches. Despite being relatively small for a short sword, its thickness is about 0.47 inches. Considering that the typical thickness of swords is around 0.24 inches, this is remarkably thick and robust. Furthermore, the sword's temper pattern is exceptionally well-crafted, earning its high acclaim as a work of art. This sword was designated as a national treasure in 1956 and is currently housed in the Tokyo National Museum. Number 5. Akashi Kuniyuki Akashi Kuniyuki is a tachi, Japanese long sword, created by the 13th century swordsmith Rai Kuniyuki. Rai Kuniyuki is considered the founder of the Rai school, which was a prominent group of swordsmiths representing the Kamakura period, known as the Golden Age of Japanese swords. During the mid-Kamakura period, the demand for more practical battlefield swords increased, especially after the Mongol invasions of Japan, the Genko. This led to the development of the Tachi, which had a longer blade than normal swords. The Rai school, adapting to the needs of real combat, lightened the sword by incorporating grooves in the blade and used different qualities of iron in specific parts to enhance sharpness and resistance to breaking. The Akashi Kuniyuki is considered one of his masterpieces, perfectly embodying the style of the Rai school. Although made for practical use, the pristine condition and lack of damage on the Akashi Kuniyuki's blade suggest it might not have been used in battle. The blade length is 30.12 inches, and it features a carving of a three-pronged Vajra at the base. The Vajra is a ritual object in Indian Tantric Buddhism and symbolizes the Buddhist deity Fudo Myo. The name Akashi Kuniyuki is derived from his history with the Akashi Matsudaira family, a daimyo family with connections to the Tokugawa shogunate. The blade collar of the sword is engraved with the Tokugawa family crest. Although the Tokugawa shoguns prohibited others from using their crest, they granted permission to the Matsudaira family. The sword was passed down within the family until it was designated a national treasure in 1953. It is currently housed in the Sword Museum in Tokyo. Number 4 Kōsetsu Samonji 
Kosesu Samonji is known as a sword crafted by Samonji, a disciple of the legendary master swordsmith Masamune. It is also his only existing tachi with a signature. The name Kusetsu Samunji originates from its association with the samurai Kosetsu Sai, who served and was highly valued by influential figures of his time, including Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who unified Japan. Kosetsu Sai was not only a warrior, but also a cultured individual. Well versed in the tea ceremony and waka poetry, as well as skilled in diplomacy, often playing the role of a negotiator during conflicts between daimyos. Eventually, he presented this sword to Tokugawa Ieyasu, whom he was serving at the time. The sword was later given to his son, Tokugawa Yorinobu. At the age of 14, He carried this sword during his first battle at the Siege of Osaka in winter, one of the largest battles in Japanese history. The blade of this sword is 30.75 inches long and features a beautifully executed, gently undulating wave pattern. Additionally, it comes with an exquisite mount, which was specifically commissioned by Tokugawa Ieyasu, adding significant value to the sword. This sword remained a treasured heirloom of the Tokugawa family until 1934, when it was auctioned off and left the family's possession. After changing hands privately, it was designated a national treasure in 1951. Today, it is on display in an art museum in Hiroshima Prefecture. Number three, Inabago. Inabago is known as a sword crafted by Go Yoshihiro, who was the foremost disciple of the legendary swordsmith Masamune. Go was an active swordsmith in the 14th century. His works are renowned for their distinct patterns and textures on the blade, along with exceptional sharpness. Despite being recognized as a master swordsmith, He tragically passed away at the age of 25. Yoshihiro was a rare genius in the history of sword making, having mastered the craft at such a young age. Initially, many of his masterpieces were in existence, but as time passed, many of these swords disappeared, making those that remain legendary and highly valuable. The Inabago has a blade length of 27.91 inches, with a gently undulating wave like pattern on the blade. The jihada, ground of the blade, features a fine wood grain pattern, indicating the high quality of the sword. It is considered to be one of the finest masterpieces created by Go Yoshihiro. The name Inabago. Was originally bestowed in honor of the samurai Inaba Shigemichi, who favored this sword. He was a Sengoku period warrior who served under renowned warlords such as Oda Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi. Shigemichi held the position of Umamawari, a role in the samurai hierarchy. An Umamawari was a mounted samurai responsible for escorting and protecting the lord. Delivering messages and serving as a key force in battles. This position was typically filled by highly skilled and elite warriors who often served as a sort of personal guard for their lord. After Inaba's death, the sword was acquired by Tokugawa Ieyasu, reportedly for a mere 15 million yen in today's value. It then passed on to his descendants. And was preserved through generations until modern times. In 1951, this sword was designated as a national treasure, signifying its historical and cultural significance. Today, it is housed in a museum in Yamaguchi Prefecture. Number two, Yamatorige. Yamatorige is a sword known as the beloved blade of the Sengoku period warlord Uesugi Kenshin, and it is also regarded as the most expensive sword in history. Uesugi Kenshin 
referred to as the God of War, or Dragon of Ichigo, was a warlord famously respected for his exceptional martial prowess. Unlike other notable warlords, he had no ambition for territorial expansion, with his domain remaining largely within Echigo province throughout his life. He only led military campaigns when called upon by other states, achieving victory in most of these endeavors. Even Oda Nobunaga, who was close to unifying Japan, was very cautious not to antagonize him. This sword was treasured by Kenshin and later used by his adopted heir, who succeeded him as the head of the Uesugi clan. It has since been passed down as a family heirloom within the Uesugi lineage. The value of this sword is enhanced not only by its historical significance, but also by the beauty of its blade. The name Yamatorige, which translates to mountain bird feather, was derived from the delicate and ornate pattern of the blade, resembling the feathers of a mountain bird. This pattern is created during the quenching process, where the heated sword is rapidly cooled in water and is a crucial aspect in the appreciation of Japanese swords. Furthermore, this sword is known as the most expensive in history, valued at an astonishing 500 million yen. In 2020, Satoshi City in Okayama Prefecture purchased it from a private owner for this amount. Recognized as a national treasure in 1952, the sword is currently held by the city and is displayed to the public about once a year. Number 1. Mikazuki Munichika Mikazuki Munichika is a sword created by the famous swordsmith Sanjo Munichika during the Heian period. It is one of the Tenka Goken, a term that refers to the five most celebrated swords among Japanese swords. Among the swords crafted by this swordsmith, there are several, including Kogitsunimaru, that, despite not existing anymore, still resonate as legends. The blade length of this sword is 31.5 inches. Its beauty is enhanced by the slender width and the gentle curve towards the tip. The origin of the name Mikazuki Munichika comes from the crescent moon-like pattern on the blade. Several crescent moon patterns appear along the edge, making it a distinctive feature of this sword. This sword was favored by the shogunate and other powerful figures of the time, but it is particularly known for being in the possession of Yamanaka Yukimori, a retainer of the Amago clan. He was renowned for his martial skills and his deep sense of justice. Known for his devotion to the crescent moon, he would pray to it daily and offered featured the moon in his armor and weapons. After the fall of the Amago clan, he devoted himself to its restoration, but was killed before his ambition could be realized. As if foreseeing his own demise, he respectfully returned the sword to its original owner, considering himself unworthy of it. Later, in 1951, the sword was designated as a national treasure of Japan. It is currently housed in the Tokyo National Museum, where it is periodically exhibited. Katana, a symbol of Japan's history, have been preserved as cultural assets through countless generations. The Tokyo National Museum, Japan's largest museum, holds 19 national treasure swords and numerous other historical blades, making it the largest sword museum in the country. In this episode, we will introduce three particularly historical katana displayed at the Tokyo National Museum. Number one, Fukushima Kanemitsu. Fukushima Kanemitsu is a tachi, Japanese long sword, crafted by the swordsmith Kanemitsu who was active in the 14th century. 
Kanemitsu was a disciple of the legendary swordsmith Masamune and himself created numerous famous blades. This sword is characterized by its large and magnificent appearance, a common trait among swords from the 14th century. The name Fukushima Kanemitsu originates from the warlord Fukushima Masanori, who owned the sword during the 16th to 17th centuries. He was known as a retainer who served under Toyotomi Hideyoshi, the warlord who achieved the unification of Japan. From his youth, Fukushima served closely with Hideyoshi, and their relationship was akin to that of best friends. Fukushima's significant rise to fame was during the Battle of Shizukatake in 1583, a conflict between the then powerful warlord Shibata and Hideyoshi. Fukushima contributed greatly to the victory by defeating multiple enemy generals. He continued to secure victories in numerous battles, becoming a formidable warlord. Known for his deep loyalty to Hideyoshi, Fukushima is often described as a brave warrior who, however, loved drinking and lacked strategic cunning. As a warrior inclined toward combat, he did not get along well with his more tactically minded colleague Ishida Mitsunari, who disliked war, often leading to conflicts between them. Fukushima, distinguished in martial arts and celebrated for his achievements in numerous battles, possessed several famous swords. The manner in which the celebrated sword Fukushima Kanemitsu came into his hands is quite telling of his character. The incident occurred in 1600 when he became the lord of a certain castle. Following the punishment of the abbot of Hongakuji, a temple under his dominion, an investigation of the temple revealed the presence of the famed sword Kanemitsu. With an insatiable desire for fine swords, he seized it for himself, making it his personal weapon. Henceforth, this sword, originally belonging to the temple, came to be known as Fukushima Kanemitsu. There's a famous story that illustrates his poor behavior when drinking. It occurred during a banquet with the warrior Morita Hei, where, in a drunken state, he challenged Morita, saying, If you can finish this drink, you may take whatever reward you wish. And then, offered him a large quantity of sake. Morita, seizing the moment, drank it all and took the family treasure, the spear known as Nihongo. The next morning, Fukushima regretted his actions, but it was too late. Nihongo is now considered one of the three greatest spears in Japan, arguably the most valuable. That he lost such a spear in a drunken impulse showcases his extravagant and impulsive nature. After his death, Fukushima Kanemitsu left his family and was passed down through various daimyo families. In 1962, it was designated as an important cultural property and is currently held by the Tokyo National Museum where it is periodically displayed. Number 2. Ishida Masamune Ishida Masamune is known as the beloved sword of the famous Sengoku period warlord Ishida Mitsunari. This sword was crafted by the renowned swordsmith Masamune in the 14th century. The name Ishida Masamune was given in honor of warlord Ishida Mitsunari's fondness for the blade. Ishida is known as a strategic genius of the Sengoku period and a central figure in the Battle of Sekigahara. Born into a powerful family, he spent his early years in a temple where he caught the eye of warlord Toyotomi Hideyoshi and began serving as his retainer. Ishida's most significant role 
came during the Bunroku Campaign in 1592. After unifying Japan, Hideyoshi, aiming for global expansion, invaded the Korean Peninsula. Ishida was appointed as the general in charge of the Korean expedition. Following Japan's unification, the seasoned Japanese military, forged in the era of the Warring States, displayed tremendous strength, swiftly capturing Korean castles one after another within just two months. However, as the battle prolonged, the Japanese forces faced difficulties with severed supply lines and famine, leading to a strenuous struggle. In response, Ishida, playing a central role, initiated peace negotiations with Korea. Yet, the peace terms proposed by Hideyoshi, who was observing the situation from Japan, were exceedingly demanding, including demands for approximately half of Korean territory and hostages from Korea to Japan. Ishida, fully aware that the Japanese forces could not continue fighting, did not believe these terms would be accepted and took the liberty of altering the peace conditions before presenting them to the Korean side. Notably, Fukushima Masanori, the owner of the previously mentioned sword Fukushima Kanemitsu, was also involved in this campaign. The revelation of Ishida's unilateral modification of the peace terms enraged Fukushima and other warlords, leading to a potential split within the Japanese forces. Several incidents during the Korean expedition bred animosity among numerous warlords, setting the stage for future conflicts. Years after the Korean expedition, Hideyoshi, their lord, passed away. Japan was then plunged into intense conflict over who would emerge as the next supreme ruler. Amidst this turmoil, Fukushima, harboring resentment towards Ishida, attacked his residence. During this crisis, the warlord Yuki Hideyasu sheltered Ishida and escorted him to safety. Grateful for this act, Ishida expressed his thanks by gifting his cherished sword, Ishida Masamune, to Yuki Hideyasu. In 1600, the decisive Battle of Sekigahara erupted. In this battle, Ishida fought as the leader of the Western Army in an effort to protect the Toyotomi clan after Hideyoshi's death. On the other side, the Eastern Army was led by the future ruler of Japan, Tokugawa Ieyasu, with Fukushima joining to settle his grudge against Ishida. Despite Ishida's unwavering dedication to the Toyotomi clan, he was betrayed by his subordinates one after another, leading to his eventual defeat and execution. The blade of this sword is notably marked with a significant notch, a testament to the numerous battles Ishida endured throughout his lifetime. The exact circumstances of how this notch was acquired remain unknown, but it symbolizes the tumultuous life and the battles Ishida faced. Today, this sword is designated as an important cultural property of Japan and, by some twist of fate, is housed alongside the famed Fukushima Kanemitsu at the Tokyo National Museum. Number 3 Kanze Masamune Kanze Masamune is a sword crafted by the legendary swordsmith Masamune in the 14th century, just like the Ishida Masamune. It is known as one of Masamune's masterpieces. The blade length is 25.3 inches with a relatively narrow body width, and the sword is particularly notable for the sparkling particles visible along the blade. The name Kanze Masamune originates from its transmission through the Kanze family, known for their prominence in no theater. While famed swords are commonly passed down through shogunate or daimyo families, 
It is rare for one to be inherited by a family not of the warrior class. No is a historic Japanese traditional performing art, recognized as an intangible cultural heritage by UNESCO. It involves performers wearing masks and beautiful costumes, expressing stories through song and dance, accompanied by musical instruments. No, cherished by many warlords, spread throughout Japan in the 16th to 17th century, becoming an officially recognized performance art by the shogunate during major ceremonies. The Kanze family, historic no performers, were deeply protected by the Ashikaga shogunate of the time. While not definitively known, it is highly speculated that this sword was bestowed upon them by the 14th century shogun Ashikaga Yoshimitsu. Despite surviving the tumultuous era of war, they sensed the decline of the Ashikaga shogunate and foresaw the changing times. Consequently, they sought the protection of the future ruler, Tokugawa Ieyasu, and offered this sword to him as a token of their allegiance. Subsequently, the sword was passed between the Tokugawa family and their retainers through a series of gifts and offerings. In the modern era, the 15th Tokugawa shogun presented it to the imperial family, Having traversed between various individuals as a symbol of loyalty, this sword is now designated as a national treasure and is owned by the nation, preserved at the Tokyo National Museum. The Tenkagoken, or the Five Swords Under Heaven, refers to the collective name for five specific swords that are renowned among the numerous Japanese swords for their exceptional beauty and rarity. These swords, alongside the Tenka San Menso, are representative icons in the world of Japanese swords due to their outstanding beauty and historical value. The exact time when these five swords began to be called Tenka Goken is unclear. It is believed that their selection criteria might have included factors such as the aesthetic beauty of the swords and their historical lineage. In this video, I will introduce the five swords that are counted among the Tenka Goken. Number 1. Onimaru Kunitsuna Onimaru Kunitsuna is a famous sword crafted by the master swordsmith Awataguchi Kunitsuna during the Kamakura period. This sword is currently the only one among the Tenka Goken that is a royal treasure, known as Gyobutsu. Due to its royal status, it is seldom displayed to the public, and the photographs of it in books are limited to those taken on rare occasions. The blade length of Onimaru Kunitsuna is 30.8 inches. It is known for its unusually strong curvature among Japanese swords. The entire blade is evenly curved, with the center of the curvature positioned at the midpoint of the blade length. The name Onimaru Kunitsuna is derived from a legend. Hojo Tokiyori, the fifth regent of the Kamakura Shogunate and then the most powerful person in Japan, was tormented by a little demon appearing in his dreams. No purification rites seemed to work, and he progressively weakened. One night, an old man claiming to be Onimaru Kunitsuna appeared in his dream and said, I've become rusty and cannot be drawn from my sheath because I was held by impure hands. Clean the rust off and I will rid you of the demon. Following the old man's instructions from the dream, Tokiyori cleaned the rust off his sword. After maintaining it, he propped the drawn sword against a pillar in his bedroom. The sword fell over, accidentally chopping off the leg of a nearby hibachi. When he examined the severed part, he was astonished to find that it bore a striking resemblance to the demon from his dreams. It seemed the demon tormenting him was depicted on the hibachi's leg. After this incident, Tokiyori recovered 
and the sword became a treasured heirloom of the Hojo clan. Number two, Mikazuki Munichika. Mikazuki Munichika was crafted by the famous swordsmith Sanjo Munichika during the Heian period. The sword is well known for its beauty and is said to be the most beautiful among the Tenko Goken. Among the swords made by Sanjo Munichika, there are others like Kokitsune Maru and Iwato Oshi, which, although they no longer exist, have maintained a legendary presence. The blade length of this sword is 31.5 inches. The beauty of its curvature is accentuated by its slender width and the gentle tapering towards the tip. The most distinctive feature of this sword is the crescent moon-shaped patterns on the blade, which inspired its name. Multiple crescent moon patterns can be seen along the edge of the blade. This sword was favored by powerful figures of this time, including the Toyotomi and Tokugawa families. But it is particularly known for being in the possession of Yamanaka Yukimori, a vassal of the Amago family. He was a warrior respected for his martial prowess and integrity, even admired by Oda Nobunaga. Known for his devotion to the crescent moon, Yukimori would pray to it daily and often featured the moon in his armor and weapons. After the fall of the Amago family, he attempted to restore their power, but was killed in the process. It seemed he foresaw his demise as he humbly returned the Mikazuki Munichika to its original owner before his death. Currently, the sword is housed in the Tokyo National Museum and was designated a national treasure in 1951. The sword is displayed regularly, allowing visitors to appreciate its stunning beauty, particularly the crescent moon patterns. Number 3. Dojigiri Yasutsuna Dojigiri Yasutsuna, created by the swordsmith Ohara Yasutsuna, known as the originator of swordsmiths, is one of the earliest Japanese swords from the Heian period. It is a famous sword, considered the foremost among the Tenka Goken, and has been designated as a national treasure. The blade length of this sword is 31.5 inches. It is characterized by a strong curvature and a wide blade. The pattern of the blade, known as komirare, consists of small, wave-like lines. The name Dojigiri derives from the legend of Minamoto no Yorimitsu, slaying the demon Shuten Doji. Shuten Doji, one of the most famous demons in Japanese folklore, was notorious in Kyoto during the Heian period for his evil deeds, including abducting people. Minamoto no Yorimitsu, a warrior of the time, was ordered by the emperor to subdue this demon. Yorimitsu infiltrated the demon's stronghold and started a banquet, serving wine to Shuten Doji and his minions. Unbeknownst to them, the wine was poisoned, rendering them immobile. Seizing the opportunity, Yorimitsu used his sword to finish off the demons. It was with this sword that he beheaded Shuten Doji, leading to the name Dojigiri. Today, this sword is housed in the Tokyo National Museum, the largest museum in Japan. There, exhibitions featuring Dojigiri Asuna are held regularly. Number 4. O Denta Mitsuyo O Denta Mitsuyo is a sword forged by the renowned swordsmith Mikei Denta Mitsuyo during the late Heian period. He specialized in creating swords that were short in blade length, wide in body, and had a substantial weight. O Denta Mitsuyo, following this style, is distinct with a blade length of only 25.6 inches and a hefty build. This sword is known as one of the favorite swords of Ashikaga Takeuchi, the first shogun of the Murumachi shogunate. It was treasured alongside Onimaru Kunitsuna in the Ashikaga shogunno family. However, during the era of the 15th shogun, it was handed over to Toyotomi Hideyoshi in exchange for a domain of 10,000 koku. Subsequently, Toyotomi Hideyoshi gifted it to his vassal, Maeda Toshie, 
Maeda Toshie was a military commander who served the Oda and Toyotomi families, renowned for his numerous military achievements. An anecdote associated with this sword involves Gohime's mysterious illness. Gohime, Maeda Toshie's fourth daughter, was dearly loved by Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who once remarked that he would have made her his heir if she were a boy. At one point, she fell ill with an unknown disease. As her condition did not improve, people speculated that she might be possessed by a fox spirit. To ward off the evil spirits, Toshie borrowed the spiritually powerful Oden Tomizio from Hideyoshi and placed it beside her pillow. Remarkably, within just three days, her illness was cured. However, when Toshie returned the sword to Hideyoshi, Gohime fell ill again. Seeing this, Hideyoshi decided to gift the sword to Toshie permanently. In 1957, Oden Tomizio was designated a national treasure. It is currently held by the Maeda Ikutokukai, an organization established by the descendants of Toshie. Number 5. Juzumaru Tsunetsugu Juzumaru Tsunetsugu was crafted by the renowned swordsmith Aoe Tsunetsugu during the Kamakura period. He and his two brothers were known as the exclusive swordsmiths for Emperor Kotoba, the 82nd Emperor of Japan. This sword has a blade length of 33 inches, making it the longest among the Tenkagoken. It is about 8 inches longer than Oden Tomizio. Juzumaru Tsunizugu is characterized by a wide base and a narrower tip. Unlike the other swords in the Tenkagoken, there are no legends about the sharpness of this sword. This is because it was once owned by the Buddhist monk Nichiren, the founder of the Nichiren sect of Buddhism, which remains a major religious force in modern Japan. The name Juzumaru originates from the fact that Nichiren carried this sword for protection while traveling to sacred mountains. He wrapped a juzu, rosary, around its hilt and carried it by his side, thus earning the sword its name. There is also a legend that Nichiren miraculously did not fall while climbing steep mountains using this sword as a staff. After Nichiren's death, the sword became one of his three relics and has been revered as a precious belonging of the great monk. Today, this sword is not kept in a museum or art gallery, but is preserved by Hongkoji Temple in Hyogo Prefecture. It is publicly displayed only during the temple's festival held on November 3rd. In history, there was a military commander who had possessed four of the Tenka Goken except for Juzumaru Tsunetsugu. He was Ashikaga Yoshiteru, the 13th shogun of the Muromachi shogunate. Known as a swordsman shogun, Yoshiteru learned swordsmanship from famous swordmasters. There are legends that these swords were used in battle under his command. In 1565, he faced betrayal by his vassals, and his residence was attacked in an event known as the Eiroku Incident. Surrounded by 10,000 enemy troops, Yoshiteru fought valiantly, living up to his reputation. He fought off intruders into his castle with the Tenka Goken he had collected changing swords as they dulled from cutting down his enemies. Yoshiteru's prowess was extraordinary, reportedly defeating over 30 men single-handedly. However, overwhelmed by sheer numbers, his end came heroically, speared from all sides. The Japanese Sword known globally as a symbol of the samurai culture, has a storied presence in Japan's history. Many of these swords are celebrated for their exceptional sharpness and the legendary tales of the warlords who wielded them. In this video, I will introduce the top five most famous katana that still exist today. Number five. 
食来切り見つたら。食来切り見つたら is said to be a sword crafted in the 13th century by Mitsutara, the founder of the Osafune School, which is the largest swordsmith school in Japanese history. This sword is known to have been bestowed by Toyotomi Hideyoshi, a warlord who unified Japan in the 16th century, to Date Masamune. Masamune, known by the nickname One Eyed Dragon, Was a one eyed samurai warlord. He succeeded his family's leadership at 17, and by 19 had control over most of northern Japan, becoming a powerful daimyo at a young age. It is said that had he been born 10 years earlier, he might have become a ruler of all Japan. There's an interesting anecdote behind the unique name Shokudai Kiri. It is said that the name was derived from an incident where Masamune, who favored this sword, accidentally cut through a bronze candle stand when he lightly touched it with the blade while cutting down a vassal who had made a blunder. Thus, the sword came to be known as Shokudai Kiri, meaning candle stand cutter. Afterwards, this sword was presented to him by the Tokugawa shogunate family. Who had achieved unification of Japan. It was then passed down through generations as a family heirloom. However, this sword, which could be described as a treasure of Japan, was struck by tragedy. In 1923, the great Kanto earthquake occurred, causing extensive damage and affecting approximately 1.9 million people. The Tokugawa family's residence in Tokyo was also damaged in this disaster. During the earthquake, a storehouse containing 168 famous swords exploded due to the impact, and many swords were burned. At that time, the blade collar of this sword melted due to the heat and fused to the blade. As a result, Although its value as a historical artifact remained unchanged, it was believed that its value as a work of art significantly decreased in the eyes of the people at the time, and the sword disappeared from the public eye. Among Japanese sword enthusiasts, it became commonly believed that this sword had been destroyed in the earthquake. However, in modern times, The popularity of a video game called Token Rambu, which features swords as motifs, triggered a surge of inquiries about this sword from female fans of the game to the Tokugawa family. Following an investigation by the Museum of the Tokugawa family, it was discovered that the sword still exists, albeit in a burnt condition. Since then, the museum regularly displays this sword. Attracting many visitors who come to see it. Number four Koryu Kagimitsu. Koryu Kagimitsu is a work of the renowned 14th century swordsmith Kagimitsu, considered one of his finest creations and currently designated as a national treasure. Originally, this sword was said to be the favorite of the military commander Kusunoki Masahige. Who played a crucial role as the right hand man to the emperor in the 14th century? However, its whereabouts became unknown over time. Then, in the 19th century, this sword was discovered in a farmhouse by a sword dealer. Realizing it was Masashige's beloved sword, the dealer sought the expertise of the most prominent sword appraisal family in Japan at the time. However, This family was skeptical of its authenticity and declared it a fake. Disheartened, the sword dealer was on his way home when an official from the Edo shogunate, who had heard about the sword, pursued him and bought the sword. After the official's death, the sword was once again purchased by another sword dealer. The family that took interest in this sword was the Yamada Asayamon family. Who were professional executioners and sword testers for the Edo shogunate, known for their exceptional swordsmanship. Eventually, after competing with other interested parties, 
they acquired the sword for 50,000 yo, an amount equivalent to over 1 billion yen in today's currency. Ownership of the sword changed again toward the end of the 19th century. As the era became more peaceful, the Yamada family decided to part with the sword, presenting it to Emperor Meiji. The emperor, who was very fond of the sword, added a saber mount to it and wore it regularly, making it known as one of Emperor Meiji's favorite swords. After World War II, the sword was transferred to the Tokyo National Museum. In 1952, it was designated as a national treasure under the then-existing Law for the Preservation of National Treasures and remains in the museum's collection to this day. Number 3. Dojikiri Yasutsuna Dojikiri Yasutsuna is the premier blade among the Tenkogoken, the five best swords under heaven, and is designated as a national treasure. The Tenkogoken represents the five most exemplary swords in the history of katana. This sword, one of the earliest in the history of Japanese swords, was crafted during the Heian period by the swordsmith Ohara Yasutsuna known as the pioneer of swordsmiths. The name Dojikiri originates from a legend involving the warrior Minamoto no Yorimitsu, who is said to have slain the demon Shuten Doji, one of the most famous demons in Japanese folklore. During the Heian period, Shuten Doji and his demon followers were notorious for abducting people and committing evil acts in Kyoto. Yonimitsu received an imperial order to subdue these demons. He infiltrated the demon stronghold and hosted a banquet, serving wine laced with poison. As the intoxicated demons became immobilized, Yonimitsu used his sword to finish them off, beheading Shuten Doji with it, thereby giving the sword its name Dojikiri, meaning Shuten Doji Cutter. The legend of Minamoto no Yorimitsu's demon slaying has become well known, but the story of how the sword Dojigiri Yatsuna came into his hands is also legendary. The swordsmith realized that the sword he had crafted was such a masterpiece that he decided to present it to the most powerful authority in Japan at the time, the shogun Sakanue no Muramaro. Upon receiving the sword, Muramaro, having received a divine message from the Japanese mythological deity Amaterasu, dedicated the sword to the Ise Grand Shrine. It is said that Minamoto no Yonimitsu later visited the shrine and was bestowed the sword by the deity, possibly knowing in advance that he was destined to fight demons, granting him this Japanese sword for his fated battles. Currently, this sword is housed in the Tokyo National Museum, the largest museum in Japan. There, exhibitions featuring Dojikiri Yatsuna are frequently held, allowing the public to witness this legendary sword. Number 2. Yoshimoto Samonji Yoshimoto Samonji, also known as the Sword of Conquest, is a famous blade said to have been forged in the 14th century by Samonji, a disciple of the most renowned swordsmith Masamune. The name of this sword originates from Imagawa Yoshimoto, a warlord who initially possessed it. Yoshimoto was known as a powerful daimyo with a lineage connected to the shogunate and was also famed as an excellent archer. However, in 1560, during the infamous Battle of Okehazama, the sword slipped from his grasp. This battle was initiated by Oda Nobunaga, who would later become one of Japan's greatest daimyos, marking a significant uplift in his reputation. In this battle, Nobunaga, with only about 2,000 soldiers, managed to defeat Imagawa's force rumored to be 50,000 strong through a surprise attack, killing Yoshimoto. This incredible victory significantly boosted his fame. 
During this battle, he secured the Yoshimoto Samonji as a trophy and made it his personal sword. The characters written in gold on the sword's hilt, reportedly by Nobunaga himself, detailed the victory of this battle. After Nobunaga's death, the sword passed into the hands of the warlord Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and subsequently, it was possessed by Tokugawa Ieyasu. Each of these figures played a crucial role in unifying Japan, which is why the sword is also known as the Sword of Conquest. Another reason the sword is so-called is linked to a significant event in 1615, the Battle of Osaka Summer Campaign one of the largest battles in Japanese history. This battle was fought by Ieyasu to eliminate the Toyotomi clan, bringing him on the verge of national unification. Ieyasu, wearing this sword into battle, emerged victorious. His victory in this battle achieved national unification, and the sword was passed down through generations thereafter. The sword, having journeyed through an era of intense turmoil alongside these rulers, is now designated as an important cultural property and is housed at the Kyoto National Museum. Number 1. Honjo Masumune Honjo Masumune is arguably the most renowned sword globally. This blade was passed down through the Tokugawa shogunate as a symbol of succession, but tragically was confiscated by the GHQ after World War II. The origin of the Honjo Masamune name comes from an anecdote involving a warlord named Honjo Shigenaga. During the battle, Shigenaga was struck by an opponent, splitting the clasp of his helmet in two. Astonished by the sharpness of the blade, everyone who witnessed it was amazed. After defeating the enemy warlord, Shigenaga took the sword for himself and named it Honjo after his own name. Subsequently, this sword was presented to Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who had achieved the unification of Japan. Hideyoshi was also known as a collector of famous swords, and many of the era's finest blades were gathered under the possession of Japan's most powerful ruler. After Hideyoshi's death, the sword was presented to the next shogun, Tokugawa Ieyasu. The Tokugawa family then established the Edo Shogunate in 1603, ruling as shoguns for 260 years. During this time, the sword was passed down through generations of the Tokugawa Shogunate, serving as a symbol of the shogun's authority. Each new shogun was entrusted with the sword by his predecessor, Given that the sword was treasured in the shogun's house, where the finest swords from all over Japan were collected and used as a symbol of succession, it could be argued that this sword was perhaps the most esteemed sword in Japan at that time. In 1939, World War II broke out. After Japan's defeat, the country accepted the Potsdam Declaration in 1945, which placed Japan under the occupation of the GHQ, General Headquarters of the Allied Forces. As part of their efforts to demilitarize the Japanese populace, the GHQ decided to confiscate all weapons within Japan. This included not only firearms, but also swords. The swords confiscated by the GHQ were disposed of in various ways. Some were taken as war trophies by the American occupation forces. Others were burned with gasoline, chopped up, or even melted down to be recast for uses like locomotive wheels. However, it is widely believed that the majority were dumped into the sea. Before the war, it is estimated that there were 15 million households in Japan possessing swords. Yet, approximately 3 million swords were lost due to the GHQ sword hunt. During this time, the Honjo Masamune, 
a symbol of the shogunate passed down through generations, was also seized. The Tokugawa family sword collection is believed to have fallen into the hands of a sergeant from the 7th Cavalry Regiment of the United States Army. The whereabouts of these swords, including the Honjo Masamune, have since become unknown. The name of the sergeant who took the swords was recorded in katakana as Kori Dibaimo, which was later translated as Kodi Baimo, an unusual name. Today, sword enthusiasts around the world continue to search for its whereabouts. Should it be found and returned to Japan, there is no doubt it would be declared a national treasure. Yet, to this day, no substantial leads have been found either in Japan or internationally. The sword waits somewhere in the world to be discovered someday by someone. Japanese traditional knives are recognized as first class by professional chefs worldwide for their sharpness, akin to that of Japanese swords. This is partly due to the history of swordsmiths. For over a thousand years, swordsmiths have been creating numerous swords for battles, playing a vital role. However, with the arrival of peaceful times in the 18th century, the demand for swords declined. Many master craftsmen then shifted from sword making to knife making, passing on their swordsmithing techniques to knife crafting. This is why Japanese knives possess such exceptional sharpness. I want everyone to experience the excellent sharpness and the beauty of the blades of Japanese knives. At Hocho Knife, you can purchase knives online made by Japanese knife artisans. They offer a wide variety of knives, so please find and purchase your unique knife. For the product page, please check the description of this video. In Japan, apart from the katana used by samurai, there are numerous swords of historical value, including divine swords mentioned in ancient history and Buddhist swords. The history of ancient Japan is documented in what's known as Japanese mythology, encompassing tales about the birth of Japan by the gods and the emergence of emperors, among various other stories. For many modern Japanese, these are considered fictional tales, but up until the end of World War II, the world of Japanese mythology was regarded as all true. In this video, we will introduce the most significant divine sword, as well as the top seven ancient swords. Number seven, Futsunomitama. Futsunomitama is a sword said to have belonged to Emperor Jimmu, featured in Japanese mythology. Emperor Jimmu, the great grandson of the deity Ninigi no Mikoto, was the first emperor of Japan. Before becoming emperor, the young Emperor Jimmu journeyed across Japan to establish peace. During this time, he encountered a ferocious bear known as a raging god with powerful spiritual energy. His entourage was overwhelmed by the bear's aura and lost consciousness. At that moment, a man appeared and offered a sword to Emperor Jimmu. Upon receiving the sword, the raging god fled without confrontation. This sword was Futsunomitama. Emperor Jimmu then used this sword to subdue and command various deities, thereby establishing his reign. Thus, the first emperor of Japan, Emperor Jimmu, came to power. This sword is now enshrined at the Isonokami Shrine in Nara Prefecture, where it continues to be revered to this day. Number 6. Shichiseiken Shichiseiken, or the Seven Star Sword, adorned with the Big Dipper constellation on its blade, is known as the beloved sword of Prince Shotoku Taishi, a prince of the Asuka period. This sword originated from ancient Chinese Taoist beliefs, crafted with the intent of protecting the nation and defeating evil. 
The blade features not only the seven star pattern, but also clouds and the white tiger, all symbols of Chinese celestial beliefs. Prince Shota Tukaishi, the sword's owner, is renowned for his immense contributions to Japan, such as adopting advanced culture and systems from China at the time and establishing a centralized government system around the emperor. Though legendary, it is said that he could listen to tens of people speaking simultaneously. He is also revered in modern Japan and is depicted on the 10,000 yen note. Chichiseiken, a national treasure, is currently preserved at the Tokyo National Museum. Number five, Kurikara Ken. The Kurikara Ken is a sword held by the Buddhist deity Kudo Myo. This sword is believed to have the power to overcome the three principal afflictions in Buddhism greed, anger, and ignorance. The name Kurikara originates from a dragon in Sanskrit, considered an incarnation of Fudo Myo. This dragon is often depicted entwined around the Kurikara Ken. Fudo Myo is regarded as an incarnation of Dainichi Nyodai, the highest ranking Buddha in Buddhism. He is characterized by his fearsome appearance, which is distinct from other Buddhas. However, he is actually a compassionate Buddha who guides people to cut off their afflictions. His angry expression is meant to forcibly save the wicked. It is believed that Furumyo uses this sword to discipline and ultimately save the wicked. Number four, Shichishito. The Shichishito is a national treasure and an extremely important sword for unraveling the mysteries of ancient Japanese history. It has a unique shape with three branch-like blades on each side, and its impressive appearance has led to its frequent portrayal in modern fiction movies and anime as a powerful weapon. However, it is believed to have been difficult to use as a practical weapon and is thought to have been a ceremonial sword. The sword's blade is inscribed with multiple characters, which are crucial for understanding ancient Japanese history. Efforts to decipher these inscriptions are ongoing. While the full meaning is not yet known, current interpretation suggests that the sword was presented to Japan from Korea in 369 AD as a symbol of alliance. Japanese history has a gap known as the Blank Century, spanning approximately 150 years from the mid 3rd to the 5th century, with little historical evidence. Thus, this sword serves as a valuable artifact for filling in this historical void. The Shichishito is currently housed and carefully preserved at the Isonokami Shrine. Number three, Ameno Nuboko. The Ameno Nuboko is a spear featured in Japanese mythology, believed to have created the Japanese archipelago. According to Japanese mythology, which narrates the origins of Japan's foundation. The deities responsible for creating the Japanese islands are Izanagi no Kami and Izanami no Kami. In the mythology, after the creation of heaven and earth, various deities were born. Izanagi and Izanami, the last to appear, were tasked by the other gods with forming and solidifying the earthly world. This task initiated the process of kuni-umi, or land creation. Standing on the bridge that connects heaven and earth, they stirred the chaotic earthly world below with the Ameno Nuboko, a spear given to them by the gods. The droplets that fell from the spear's tip solidified to form the first island, Onogoro Island, marking the beginning of the Japanese archipelago. Although this spear does not exist in reality, its depiction can be seen in various artworks illustrating the scene of Kuniumi. Number two, Totsuka no Tsurugi. The Totsuka no Tsurugi is a sword that appears in Japanese mythology, used by the god Susano no Mikoto. 
So Sano, a child of Izanagi no Kami, who is believed to have created the Japanese archipelago, was banished to the earth for his unruly behavior in the realm of gods. Upon his arrival in Izumo, modern day Shimane Prefecture, he encountered an elderly couple and their daughter all in tears. They revealed that a gigantic eight-headed and eight-tailed serpent, Yamata no Orochi, would appear annually to devour one of their daughters. Moved by their plight, Susanoo agreed to slay Yamata no Orochi in exchange for the daughter's hand in marriage. When Yamata no Orochi appeared, intoxicated by the strong sake prepared by Susanoo, it fell asleep. Seizing the opportunity, he drew his Totsuka no Tsurugi and defeated the serpent. While cutting off its tails, his sword struck something hard, causing a chip in the blade. From the tail emerged the divine sword, Kusanagi no Tsurugi. The Totsuka no Tsurugi is enshrined at the Ishigami Shrine in Nara Prefecture, where it remains to this day. Number 1. Kusanagi no Tsurugi The Kusanagi no Tsurugi, or the grass-cutting sword, is one of the most important swords in Japanese history. It has been passed down through generations as a symbol of the legitimate imperial throne from ancient time to the present. This sword first appears in Japanese mythology, emerging from the tale of the great serpent Yamata no Orochi, slain by Susanoo. Later, it was possessed by Yamato Takeru, a hero in Japanese mythology and the son of the 12th emperor. Fearing his fierce nature, the emperor ordered him to subjugate various tribes and deities across Japan, effectively distancing him. During his journey, he narrowly escaped death from an ambush by bandits. In a critical moment, he used the Kusanagi no Tsurugi to cut through grass causing the fire set by the bandits to turn back on them. This incident led to the sword being literally named the Grass-Cutting Sword. Since then, it has been enshrined as the sacred object at the Atsuta Shrine. However, the actual sword is so revered that no one is allowed to see or carry it. Therefore, the Kusanagi no Tsurugi in the Emperor's possession is a replica. Among the samurai who appear in Japanese history, there were those known as swordsmen, excelling in the art of swordsmanship. They dedicated their lives to honing their sword skills, sometimes secluding themselves in mountains or shrines to develop their own secret techniques and schools. The techniques they created enhanced the swordsmanship of the samurai and have been passed down to modern martial arts such as Iaido, in this video, I will introduce the top three greatest samurai. Number three, Okita Soji. Okita Soji was a samurai active in the late Edo period, known as the strongest swordsman of the Shinsengumi, a police force in Kyoto. The Shinsengumi was an elite group of swordsmen formed to maintain order in Kyoto during the tumultuous final years of the Tokugawa Shogunate. At that time in Japan, the Sono Joy movement, which revered the emperor and sought to place him at the center of governance, was gaining momentum, posing a threat to the ruling Tokugawa Shogunate. The Shinsengumi played a crucial role in protecting Kyoto from the pro-imperial, anti-foreign Sono Joy faction. Born into a samurai family in 1842, Okita lost his parents at the age of four or five. Despite facing financial hardships, his talent in swordsmanship was recognized, and he was admitted to a prestigious swordsmanship dojo at the age of nine. There, his talent quickly blossomed, and he became a master swordsman in no time. In 1863, he formed the Shinsengumi, with his fellow dojo member, Kondo Isami, who was the leader of the group and the person Okita respected the most. 
Okita then served as the captain of the first unit of the Shinsengumi. Although he was not the leader, he was reputed to be a better swordsman than the leader, Kondo Isami, and was said to be stronger than his teachers at the dojo. One of his famous techniques was the Sandanski, where he would deliver three thrusts in the time it took for his footstep to sound once. Additionally, his stance involved the sword tip being slightly lowered and a forward-leaning posture with its abdomen slightly protruding. One of the notable missions he participated in was the Ikedaya Incident. In this event, the Shinsengumi attacked a group of Sonojoi samurai gathered at an inn. With just four members, including Okita and Kondo Isami, they stormed the inn where over 20 samurai plotting against the Tokugawa shogunate were meeting. They engaged in a fierce battle with these samurai until reinforcements arrived. While Okita Soji was a prominent member of the Shinsengumi, he was also known for his frail health. In 1868, he contracted tuberculosis. Despite his attempts to return to the battlefield, his condition repeatedly worsened, and he was eventually forced to focus on recuperation. Around the same time, his respected leader, Kondo Isami, was captured and sentenced to beheading. However, those around Okita, concerned for his feelings, kept the truth from him. Okita passed away quietly at the young age of 25, without the company of friends or acquaintances, about two months after Kondo's execution, unaware of his leader's fate and concerned for him until the end. It is said in books documenting the Shinsengumi's exploits that during his convalescence, he attempted to cut a black cat with his sword, but couldn't bring himself to do it passing away with the sword still drawn. Contrary to his role as the strongest swordsman of the Shinsengumi, his true nature was quite different. He was known to be a good-natured young man, innocent like a child, and liked by everyone. He often played with children, and among the feared members of the Shinsengumi, he was perhaps the only one who was beloved by children. The sword associated with Okita Soji is known as Kiku Ichimonji Norimune. This sword was so renowned that even feudal lords found it difficult to acquire. He reportedly found it too precious to use for killing and is said to have fled without drawing it when encountering assassins. However, there was one occasion when he drew the sword following the murder of one of his Shinsengumi comrades. Lying in ambush, he drew this sword and swiftly defeated his enemy without causing any damage to the blade. After his death, the sword was reportedly enshrined in a shrine, possibly in Tokyo, although the details are unclear. Number 2. Tsukahara Bokuden Tsukahara Bokuden was a famous swordsman of the Sengoku period. He mastered a technique known as Hitotsu no Tachi, and founded the Kashima Shinto Ryu School of Swordsmanship. He boasted an undefeated record throughout his life and was celebrated as the strongest swordsman. Born in 1489 in what is now Ibaraki Prefecture into a family that inherited the Kashima Shichiryu School of Swordsmanship, Okuden was trained in swordsmanship from a young age by his father. A turning point came when he was 10 years old. His swordsmanship talent and his calm and collected nature caught the eye of the swordsman Tsukahara Yasumoto, and he was adopted into Yasumoto's family. This family was also renowned for its swordsmanship, practicing the Katori Shinto Ryu. Here, Bokuden's natural talent shone through, and by his mid-teens, he had mastered two schools of swordsmanship becoming a respected figure. At the age of 17, Bokuden set out on a warrior's pilgrimage. Although his future as a young lord of a small domain was assured, he wanted to test his skills and fortune. Traveling through various provinces and reaching the capital, Kyoto, 
he quickly made a name for himself through duels with renowned swordsmen and caught the attention of the shogun of the Muromachi shogunate. He was then appointed as a direct retainer of the shogun and thrown into the tumult of war. On the battlefield, his swordsmanship was on a different level. He fought in 37 battles, winning them all. He is said to have taken the heads of 12 generals and slain a total of 212 enemies. Remarkably, he only suffered minor arrow wounds six times. His experiences in battle greatly influenced the school of swordsmanship he later created. Bokuren also served as the swordsmanship instructor to Shogun Ashikaga Yoshiteru, known as the Swordsman Shogun, who was highly skilled in the art. In 1518, Bokuren returned to his hometown from the war-torn Kyoto and immersed himself again in swordsmanship training. At the suggestion of his foster father, he became a disciple of the famous swordsman Matsumoto Masanobu. Matsumoto Masanobu was a swordsman who had achieved enlightenment of the secret technique Hitotsu no Tachi through rigorous training secluded in a shrine, and he encouraged Bokuden to undertake similar training. Following his teacher's advice, Bokuden entered a 1,000-day retreat at a shrine. As the 1,000th day approached, one night, he received a divine revelation. An old man with a white beard appeared and thrust a wooden sword at him. Bokuden parried the wooden sword and tried to strike back, but there was no resistance. Realizing that the old man was a god or a hermit, he erased the figure from his mind and, maintaining a natural state, struck at the wooden sword with a single-minded focus. At that moment, he experienced a mysterious sensation of being one with the sword, with neither himself nor his opponent existing, just a state of no mind. This was a moment of enlightenment of the secret technique Hitotsu no Tachi, where one puts their whole body and soul into the initial strike without resorting to a second or third strike. This new understanding laid the foundation for his unique school, Kashima Shinto Ryu. The details of this secret technique were only passed on to a few select disciples and thus remain shrouded in mystery today. One of the anecdotes that highlight his strength is a legendary encounter with the famous swordsman Miyamoto Musashi. It is said that a young and impetuous Musashi suddenly attacked Bokuden while he was eating, but Bokuden managed to fend off the sword with a pot lid. However, this sword is often considered apocryphal due to the significant difference in their birth periods. Bokuden was known to favor a sword made by the swordsmith Dai Kunitoshi. Dai Kunitoshi was a swordsmith active in the 13th century in what is now Kyoto Prefecture. While the details of the specific sword Bokuden used are not clear, several swords made by this swordsmith still exist, and most are designated as national treasures or important cultural properties, indicating the high quality of his work. Number 1. Miyamoto Musashi Miyamoto Musashi is the most famous samurai in Japan, known as the strongest swordsman in history. He remains highly popular as a master of the two-sword fighting style and has been the subject of various dramas, movies, and manga. He was active during the 16th and 17th centuries. Musashi was born in 1584 in what is now Hyogo Prefecture. There are various theories about his father, but it is said that he was adopted by a master swordsman at a young age. He began formal swordsmanship training at the age of 13, but he often clashed with his father. According to one story, Musashi once mocked his father's swordsmanship while his father was whittling a toothpick, leading to a heated argument. His father, Munisai, in a rage, threw a dagger at Musashi, who calmly dodged it. This further infuriated Munisai, 
who threw another dagger. Such extreme parent-child conflicts were frequent. Eventually, Musashi left home and traveled around as a warrior, raising his reputation as a swordsman and serving as a guest retainer in various feudal lord households. He participated and made his mark in major battles of the time, such as the Battle of Sekigahara and the Siege of Osaka. According to his own book, The Book of Five Rings, between the ages of 13 and 29, he fought in over 60 duels against other swordsmen and won every time. He was a wild, fearless man who challenged any strong opponent he encountered. Having made a name for himself, Musashi was recognized for his swordsmanship skills and became a guest retainer for the Hosokawa clan in 1640. It was during this time that he began writing his autobiography, The Book of Five Rings, which is still read worldwide as a work of philosophy. After completing it, he passed it on to his disciples and passed away at the age of 64. Important documents other than his own writings also exist about Miyamoto Musashi. One such significant record is an inscription at the summit of Tamukeyama in Fukuoka Prefecture. This monument was erected by his adopted son and is engraved with over 1,100 characters of classical Chinese script. It details, among other things, his most famous duel, the Battle of Ganrujima. The challenge was issued by the swordsman Sasaki Kojiro. Although Kojiro proposed to fight with real swords, Musashi responded, It would be best for you to use a real sword. I will confront you with a wooden sword. The duo took place on an island in what is now Yamaguchi Prefecture, with both men arriving at the appointed time. When the duel commenced, Kojiro attacked with the Japanese sword, but Musashi countered with his wooden sword and struck him down in a flash. This duel became the last of his life. The island was later named Ganrujima after this duel and became known as a sacred site associated with Musashi. Musashi was also a practitioner of the two-sword fighting style and the founder of the Nitten Ichidu school of swordsmanship. It was rare for a samurai to fight with two swords, making his style unique and a testament to his incredible strength. In his book, The Book of Five Rings, he advocates the necessity for a warrior to train with two swords. Musashi's beloved sword, which he is said to have crafted himself, was named Izumi no Kami Kaneshige. The blade was made by the swordsmith Kaneshige, and the hilt was wrapped in cow or horse leather. The fittings he crafted, known as Musashi Koshirae, were practical and easy to use, carefully adjusted based on his experience in swordsmanship training. There are several swords with this signature, and the one he actually used existed until World War II, but its current whereabouts are unknown. We hope you enjoyed this exploration into the world of Japanese swords. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting content about the history of Japanese swords. Until next time, sayonara. <laughs>